we're back with the 38th episode of Lifebringers here on Skill Check. Uh, when in reality, we are coming in for a landing on the story, finally and truly. Last time on Skill Check uh, Sphere X, we have encountered a strange looking uh, performer at the gates of the city on Q's Sneaky Hippo mission. Um, he went rogue a bit and tried to do some recon, a little roguing, if you will, um, and ultimately we discovered that. Resistance was to be expected at an arcane college where some ritual components were awaiting uh, in order to defeat some magical shielding that the party needed to move ahead and stop the bomb, as well as um, kind of defeat the evil plan that the necromancy uh, as a whole has undergone. Um, unfortunately, uh, that resistance was too much for Hugh to sneak past due to some magical cheaters, um, but it'd be like it do. After a quick loop, you guys finally got sweet, sweet vengeance on the tunnel rat, as it were, um, defeating the arcane assassin who had been tracking you since Spaceport. The bold and incredible strategy of run up and hit him before he can go worked very well, and I encourage you to consider this strategy moving forward. You guys got to the city. Um, I'll say that also Seven on his watch saw that there were some people fighting in the city as well. Um, which out of character we know to be the previous one-shot characters. Um, they're currently in battle on the way to the clock tower setting up their uh, magical cannon. But the party um, was greeted by uh, Pharaoh, who basically uh, was looking to run the best show he could uh, with the newest actors, the only people alive in the city other than these strangers. We left off where you guys were presented a choice, a chance to respec and change your classes, um, where you guys kind of walked onto his performing arts center, the center of his power. It does feel like he's a little more real here. Matt, you've muddled the mixture. Now you have to start over. <laughs> <laughs> We're back, over now. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. That's okay, it's okay. Um, okay, so I have befuddled you. Because as we walk into this performing arts center to see the grand stage, new map. You're all forced to change your class. <laughs> that is so gas. You're forced oh. to, oh yes, I'm making you change characters. Uh, oh, and I actually, have to play Sorlock now. boom! Oh. You guys see the inside of the hall now? I do. Give me a couple seconds. Okay, no problem. Basically, as you guys are entering this building, um, Pharaoh is drawing almost like an astral curtain behind you, right? And trying to keep you guys secluded from the outside world and the insanity of the undead. And as this kind of beautiful like lighting and stage magic takes uh, hold, it kind of darkens, the lights are more dramatic, and you step in, there's some ceiling sconces that appear to be magically lit, um, as well as the grand stage. And he kind of stands in front of you and he says, lovely. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I have yet to see a performance. I was thinking, you know what? Let's just get started. And in fact, mm, he looks around the room and he, I think we're gonna start. He goes, places, places, please. And he kind of gestures you guys to like the audience seats. <laughs> yes, I'll go take a seat. Yeah. Take a squat. Yep. I'll pop a squat right. I want to be get a good angle. There but I want to see a little bit this. stage. What? Stage there right. There's a cushion underneath this. That's right, and a landmine <laughs> under that. Anyway, what he does is he walks over to Stewie and he says, he gives you like a graceful giving me your hand motion. Um, and he kind of walks you over to the stage. Uh, do you follow? Yeah. There's a, like a dramatic like, as like stage lights come on uh, and illuminate Stewie and kind of the crowd goes dark, um, the acoustics of the large open hall. And he says, you know, now that you're here in my place of theater, I think I have a better understanding of you as performers and your grand museum play. Actually, and then he kind of like steps into the light, does like a curtain white motion, disappears, and we see a scene where you guys are all riding the mechanical crab. There's a battle going on, blasters firing, and Foray goes thrown out of the crab. Thinking quickly, she reaches out and she grabs him. Um, and there's like a, a moment of camaraderie between the two of you as the, you know, the moment where you guys realize you were in this together. And you are kind of standing there observing, and he says, no, 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 no. I think another way, uh, please. And he kind of wipes away the old Stewie and puts you in the place. And he says, do you feel more of a connection to the natural magics? Seems like that might be where you're going. Yeah. 
Ah. I guess so. How about a rewrite? And you feel yourself taking this role where instead of reaching out to grab him, you like create vines from nowhere uh, and grab him with like natural magics. Oh shit, cool. And he says, this seems a little more right. Did you want something like this? Yes, please. Uh, and to be clear, if you take him up on this deal, you would change to a druid class. Oh. Mm, I love that I go first. Uh, no, I don't want it. Boring. Let's get him <laughs> up here. <laughs> he like yanks Foray up like on the stage and he says, places, places. And he brings it back to the front of the scene. And then we run through and we see Stewie rescuing the now foray up here. Uh, the kind of the theater perf makes you perform in this way. And then he goes, no, 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 this is wrong too. And he goes, ah, and he like touches your leg and you feel a little more like light. Uh, the scene replays and rather than you getting thrown off, you just do a kickoff back, like handspring back into the crab. And he says, now this feels a little more your style. I, uh, I immediately start getting down. I'm just like doing push-ups. <laughs> yeah, out. you probably feel young again, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm pumping out push-ups, dude. I'm doing a, a headstand. I go into a handstand, and then I'm doing like overhead push-ups, upside down. And I'm just like, this will do. This this will do. So to be clear, the deal he's offering you is to drop a bunch of cleric levels into monk. Mm -hmm. Are you doing it? Yeah, we're level five monk, baby. Okay, I think you see like Foray's muscles get tighter. Um, a lot of his like armor kind of more loosely fits. Um, I have no armor on. I oh, took that's it right. Off. You took it I'm, off. I'm I Master Roshi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, you've got a, like a sexy Master Roshi guy, <laughs> yeah. which I guess is, you know, obvious when I say the adjective with Master Roshi because he's got it. But anyway, um, so you've become a full monk or you want to do like a multi class? Now we're level five monk, baby. Okay. Um, Stunning fist away. Um, and he as says, long as I have my phone still, I, not, no augury, yes. but I need to do that with the settings. Yeah, I think that's a fair uh, question. I think that you'll still have a divine tie. I don't know that you'll have like the same level of connection. Um, that's a relationship I'm excited to explore, but you're still foray. You're still yourself. I've got to call my wife mm. once in a while. Do you while. actually do that? Well, the thing is, when you're a dragon, it takes forever. Uh, like You're 400 years old at least. So like a couple of years, it's nothing to them. He's all right. We've okay. been in the when, time. Uh, loop, so when, he's, when he's undergoing his transformation, I'm going to take out my little phone, which I imagine is like an old like Nokia, whatever <laughs> thing. And I'm going to like take a picture of him on the stage, <laughs> and then I'm going to send it to the DA. Are you, are you, are you, are you fucking... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Are you, are you fucking Dwight Schrute of our astral sea org? Is that what you're telling me? Kind of I'm just making sure, she, making sure she knows. Yeah, you're my apprentice. Her you're my <laughs> apprentice. He's already trying to throw me on the bus. Um, you send this uh, this really bad quality, like, you know, flip phone Nokia <laughs> snap. And it's like the details are there, but it's hard. It's like shaking. And you get like um, like an incoming series of responses, like a surprised, excited return text that are like, what? No way. This is. And then, like, as you're like getting these responses, um, Pharaoh says, you two have had your moment in the spotlight. Get aside, get aside. There's something new I want to explore. Come along. And he yanks you onto the stage and just forcibly shoves you guys back in the audience. He says, what were you just doing? Uh, I was just sending a picture. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I think actually he like does the, you know, the hand wave performer's wipe and you see the, we all see the picture like wide on, on stage and he says, would you like to step into his role? His one he just discarded for no reason? Uh, no, actually. I'm not. How about this? And he kind of wipes away and we go back to Spaceport in the aftermath of the grand battle in space. You guys were kind of cruising through the debris and Valar was first to spot basically the possessed radio of what we now knew to be the shadow assassin or the adversarial party. Um, and Valar back then you didn't really have the tools. All you knew how to do was smash it, right? And you fired off a guiding bolt, you broke it. And he kind of does a rewrite and he sticks you in and he kind of dresses you a little more foray-esque. Um, and he replays the scene and this time you use more powerful magics to integrate with the device. And you actually start to ask questions and get answers. And he pauses and he says, now this seems a little more right, don't you think? Some nuance. Yes, I agree. Hmm. That does seem right. The offer I'm giving you is to change to cleric. Oh, that does not seem right at all. I don't yes. want to do that <laughs> even a little bit. Ah, boring, you two. 
Sit. Sit. That one. And he points to him. Wow. Come on. Oh, I was going to do the yank. That's no, cool. no, 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 no. <laughs> and I run up. He wipes the grand starscape off the stage, and you guys find yourself in a back room bar with some rough and tumble hooligans giving you the mean eye from the other side. And the scene fast forwards where Hemp commits his first on screen murder. Mm. Ice knife in <laughs> so the true, guy. In the so back. true, we all remember. And he goes, Now mm. this, this is good. No. Murder unprovoked. But perhaps. It was provoked. It was definitely <laughs> provoked. Well, elaborate on your motivation. He's like got a screen bill out and he's writing. Well, he was swinging and hitting at me, so I had to do something in retaliation. Yes, so he was trying to punch you mm -hmm. and you killed him with magic. On accident. <laughs> I forgot how big and strong I am. Yes. And so this is what I was thinking. And he shows you like playwright's notes and it says like the sleep spell and focusing on the enchantment school. You could have easily done this. And then there's a replay of him knocking the guy out instead of killing him. Uh, yeah. But I got a feeling I'm going to have to deal with, if, after being here for a while, I think I'm going to have to deal with a lot bigger fellas than uh, a couple bar hooligans. So I think I'll just remember to eat. I got a little staff I can hit on with <laughs> next time. <laughs> he shrugs. We watch him commit murder again. He goes, yeah, that's a better ending anyway. No, it hurts. But, you know, things happen. <laughs> okay, sit, sit. Okay, bye-bye. Um, he points to seven. He goes. I kind of, I, I, I wait to see if he's going to yank me. He goes. Okay, I get up and I walk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, uh, as you're like coming up, he kind of fades into the scene where you guys ran up the stairs at the base of the tree for that druidic ritual that became the Grease Fest, thanks to Hugh. Um, and basically you guys ran up and you got in there and you were channeling druidic magics to uh, end the like necromantic outbreak there. Um, and he says, um, now this turned out okay for you guys, but, and then he kind of like, hands the audience camera and there's just the king of the road sitting there unused for the fight. And he says, you have a duty of care to the natural world. Yes, I get that you want to do the, and he like does a bunch of your like a montage of you like transforming into cool things like the shark and a dolphin. And he says, but should you not be a, a keeper of the land? That's uh, something. And then he replays the scene and basically you throw the king of the road in. He does a fire blast uh, and then everyone's like cheering. Doesn't this feel more right? I, I have been lacking in my duties of taking care of the king of the road and other natural creatures, but I feel that turning into them is the closest I can be. Bah, I suppose. Robots are cool. So <laughs> I think I understand your motivation at least. Uh, we'll just, and he kind of wipes away the king of the road and says, deal away with the supporting characters. They're not that important. Anyway, sit, sit, sit. King of the road's super important. Yeah, don't ever say that about <laughs> the king of the road. I go and sit down. He's so important, actually. <laughs> Quiet, quiet. And then he points to Shark and he goes, come on, big man, pull me. <laughs> you <laughs> pop. And your scene transition is when you guys step through the portal into the hot dog verse. Um, mm. Defeating the hot dog lich, uh, I use the term loosely, because what we see is Shark getting real mad and he just fucking runs in. All of his companions from the one shot, including Walter, going down, literally dying, and Shark having to take a deal with a hot dog lich just to survive and fight another day. He says, ooh, yeah, not your finest leadership moment. No. Have you no. thought about thinking a little more? Strategy, tactics. I'm going to be honest, I forgot I met a hot dog lich. <laughs> <laughs> On brand, but listen. And he kind of does the rewrite, and it's you taking a second, seeing like the ranged attackers and sending Walter with his grenade launcher to cover you guys as you move in. And you guys using actual terrain to your advantage to like not take those hot dog death rays. And finally you defeat Joey Chestnut. Um, and you, ne you come- Joey Peanuts. Yes. Def how, did, how did you get them confused? Of course, my bad. Joey Walnut was defeated under your ax and the grill marks are not on your skin anymore. And he mm -hmm. says, which have been there the whole time, by the way. Of course. Uh, and, and he says, now this is a leader. This is what they need. Surely you'd give up your blind rage for this. What is that guy? What? That shark. No, no, like, what's the difference between Just a fighter. Them? That's what I offer you, is transition into fighter. You'll lose your rage, but you'll gain some battle prowess. Yuck. <laughs> I'm gonna get up and walk off the stage. <laughs> Fine, the show doesn't need you, because this is the main act. Do you? Yeah, I'll come up. He 
there's no transition. Um, and he sets you down on like a bench. And he says, now you have a great play. I would like you to remind us of your crowning achievement, the moment that made you you, when you slain that child, the evil <laughs> one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was pretty cool. He, he tried to fight back too, but his little arms couldn't reach me. So it was just, <laughs> you know, like you hold your hand out on like a little kid and he starts punching but missing. It was that, but then I was stabbing him. When he's, <laughs> when I'll, he's I'll I'll telling it. this, behind him you guys see this actually unfolding and it's just i'm going to take another picture <laughs> <laughs> there's like a feed behind the stage where like your picture had been and now it's just like the picture of him with the scene behind him it's just like bad graphics like eight pixels uh and he says but you learned you you learned that that child was bad mm -hmm. with a little bit of magical assistance and um he kind of turns you around so you can see the scene. It's like freeze framed and the kid had been writing like magic symbols on the ground before you had come to kill him. And he says, do you know what these were? Yeah, they were nuclear launch codes. <laughs> For a matter of speaking, yes. A partial summoning ritual to the darkest places of the universes. Another year and this child would have unleashed an apocalypse, literally. Yeah. But, and he um, kind of wipes away the memory and replays the scene where this time you aren't quite as limber, but you have like a magic spell book and your eyes are glowing and illuminated are like various runes. He says, what if this child was cursed in a way that could have been broken by more powerful magics? You would not have had to kill him. An opportunity to redeem instead of to stab. Boom. <laughs> Fine, I hate this. <laughs> that's, not, that's a chance I'm not willing to take. I suppose. Well, at least there's one showman among you. He points to 4A. Still doing push-ups. <laughs> Still doing, Still doing push-ups. <laughs> well, I'm glad that we had this opportunity to catch up. Now, I have one more question for you. What are you waiting for? Nothing. And he uh, like produces the screenplay, and he hands it to you. Oh, waiting, uh, yeah. That Which, by the way, you had answer. like five minutes ago. Do we want to ask the screenplay something? You know, a few days ago, in, in real life, I was going to bed and I was like, I got to think of a great question for that screenplay. And then I fell asleep. Because <laughs> <laughs> too many good what questions. What a beautiful story. Right. Um, yeah. Too many good questions. You got a good question. And you were crushing them last week. Yeah, I just don't, it's yes what? or no answers. And yeah. I don't think there's any yes or no's that help us much. What, uh, well, in your big backstory of finding the, um, the relics, is there something you could ask that would just progress us somewhere instead of finding out like a big secret of the universe? Like, yeah, is there a relic on this plane? Or like, is there mm. a... Like, oh, wait, there wait, one moment. And he, like, this is his domain. He wipes the concert hall and we're in like a creepy library at like a big old forgotten table, like in chairs, like with candlelight. And he goes, much more appropriate, more appropriate. Are you the one answering the questions that we write in the book, the screenplay? Hmm. In a matter of speaking. We could just try asking him not yes or no questions. We asked That's him a lot last time. Yeah. I feel like he's tapped out. He was giving you some good answers, though. Yeah, yeah, just knowing if there's a relic here help you? Not really. It's all about my dad. The only reason I was hunting him was to get to him, and I know he's not here. Was he here, though? If he was... Do you know he's not here? Well, if he well, was... He knows is we, we talked to him about it. I guess, it. yeah, we can ask you. You're kind of our friend. Is his dad here? Colleagues in our... But no, not here. At least not now. Okay. If he Figured was, he may have left something behind, though. It's a lot easier when we have a non-yes or no question got to ask. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some things I don't know, but if I knew he was here, I'd probably tell you, because it'd be interesting. I think that's fun. I just don't know any yes or no answers. Like, knowing he was here does nothing at all. Yeah, what do we need to know? I don't think we need, to, like, we know, we know where everything. we need to go and yeah. what we need to do. Do you? Yeah, I gotta go talk to the college guy. And then we gotta go to that mountain. Oh yeah, college hunks. And then we gotta him. make you the god. <laughs> mm -hmm. Me? Yeah, most likely. Or yeah. the water temple lady. We never called in her favor. That's true. Yeah, I still have the instrument. Does that reset every time? Uh, she still has some kind of token that's like... It's an instrument. Got, di got divine power, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's put it back in our pocket. <laughs> <laughs> what would you ask the screenplay, Pharaoh? Yeah. Ah, well, I've heard many good questions from you about this, but 
Concrete information is hard to come across in a yes or no format. I tell you what, you do have a lot of good theories, but you guys have been dealing with this pesky morality thing. You know what I mean? Wondering about the museum's intentions and stuff. I, I don't care. I'll tell you. I that's what care. I'm saying. Yeah. As long as the performance goes on and is interesting, who cares if they're good or bad? That's yeah. all I'm saying. Now, I think it would be good to ask a lower down question, perhaps about the practical movements of your enemies. That might give you some workable action. Does that help you? Not really. <laughs> you sure you don't want to take me up on that be smarter offer? <laughs> <laughs> He's like looking at like three people right now. See, that's the problem. It's like we know there's all these questions we can ask in this level, but it feels like such a waste to ask them. Yeah, because we can kill all the shit anyway. Right. I'll give you one freebie, just one. No, I, I don't really actually write the answers. It's more that that artifact uh, has an understanding of how I would answer them if I had the power to do so, with some assistance from an old museum thing. It's a whole different timeline universe deal. But, but, it does not have the ability to present you a new opportunity for a question until you've answered one. And one probably will give you another scenario pretty quickly if you get my drift. If you're gonna ask them a really easy question, like, is the sky blue or something like that? That way we get to the next one. Oh. Yes, why? but if you're gonna do that, why would you just? <laughs> He's like, that's so. That's so. We weird. still haven't figured out if the kid I killed was good or not. That's uh, true. We uh, could blow it on that. We could also just ask uh, something about this area. I was gonna say we could ask to make sure we can like if we go there, can we, we make a guy a god, enough? or if we're strong enough? Yeah. No. Yeah. Just, just, Here, we'll I mean, just ask answers. an. I, I'll just ask an overarching question. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Did my dad create this museum we work for? Mm. That's a great question. Mm. Like the new one. Yeah, yeah, the one we're employed by. If you're, okay, the question is, did my dad create the museum that you work for? Yeah, or did, did my dad create a museum? To did my dad broad? create a museum? Okay, um, you write this down in the screenplay. Um, you pen it as best you can, and you see like, the way this always works is it starts to give you like the the way things play out and it writes some details and then it says uh, it like kind of flips to the back uh, and then like in theater script like playbill old timey it says no. Okay, well, answers that. That's a good question. Yeah. yeah, he's not powerful enough to make a museum, but he's powerful enough to do. That's everything not else. what you asked. It just means he didn't. No. All right. Or yet. <sighs> What if he made the whole town? This has been fun. Thing. Do you guys want to go on a scavenger hunt? Oh, fun. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, come this way. Uh, and he will show you guys at the top of the map, there is a like kind of more ancillary <gasps> building. Oh, you're getting so good at this. Oh, shoot. Thank you. Uh, feel free to move yourselves up there. I gotta do everything around here. Gotta do everything around. I can just take away your ability to move stuff if you really want. <laughs> How's that sound? Um, yeah. Terrible. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> he walks you through, bless you, you, a like side hallway, um, kind of that the general public would access between buildings, and he kind of takes you and he says, "It's more of a storage reception area, but it would do fine for a stage for this." What are you giggling about? <laughs> Pass he, the note up here. He stood on top of me for a he, second. He moved me. I was next to him, and then he moved away, and then I followed him up. <laughs> That's cute. That's sorry, cute. sorry, I didn't no, hear what you said in role play. I was busy giggling about okay. it. I wasn't role playing. I, yeah, I'm just, I actually am a crazy, uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> he brings you to this, like, reception storage area, and he says, I propose a little bit of a challenge. I think I'm going to count to 18, and I'll give you the knowledge that there is a powerful weapon in this room. Good luck. And he starts to count. One, and I'm gonna want you guys to roll initiative. Oh gosh. 16. 6. 6. Also 6. Oh, what? Yep. Oh, yeah. The devil. Whoa. Uh, 20. Well, sorry, okay, Valar, yeah. What, 20? I mean, do you hear they got three sixes? That's awesome. That's Wait. pretty cool, guys. I take it back. Eleven. Nine. <laughs> it's almost a six. What'd you get? Eleven. Okay. Valar, you get the first crack. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> For those of um, you playing at home, 18 seconds is roughly three rounds of combat. Hmm. And the prompt is there is a secret Somewhere in this, in this room is a hidden weapon of great power. Okay, well, I'm standing in front of this display case. Can I search that? Give me an investigation. Ooh, 19. Hmm. Uh, you think that there might be a compartment that you can't quite access, but you don't know if there's anything in it. That's what a 19 got me? Yep. Okay. Um, then I will take my action on this turn to cast Divine Sense. Okay. Um, I was going to say that your investigation would be in action for the purposes of this minigame. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. So let's l go from there and see what the rest of the gang wants to do. Yeah. All right. Uh, Hugh. Um, I mean, if it's something in here, it's probably like real strong, right? Like I wouldn't be able to break it. So I'm just going to start attacking things. I'll come up to this and... I'm just going to break this. Your plan is a Legend of Zelda pot smash? Yeah, basically. Lovely. Let's just roll for luck. Um, I'll say if it's a 19 or 20, you find something cool. Oh, perhaps a skill check? I'm down. Where's luck here? Uh, I'm just oh. assigning a random number, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> saying there's a 10% chance you find something cool. Okay. If you're just walking through the room, randomly the smashing. The, the, the seven! That was the modifier. Good luck. The table loved that. No Good luck. Nine. That's a nine. All right, you just smash it. Nothing came out. Uh, all right, four eight. Um, I'm going to run to the lamp. I love okay. lamp. I love lamp. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. I'm going to pick it up. Okay, you pick up the lamp. And I start rubbing it. You rub the lamp. I look at the lamp. You look at the lamp. I feel the lamp. You feel I the lamp. I smell the lamp. You smell the lamp. Anything cool about it? It's a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty cool. Nice. Do you want to investigate the lamp? Yes. Roll me an investigation check. I'll give you advantage because, you know what? I'll give you advantage if you taste the lamp. Okay. Also, does the lamp have a CMC of eight? And <sighs> if I spend eight and tap it, does it How dare you make Magic the Gathering jokes in my Dungeons oh, wait, and no, Dragons no. I'm game? sorry. It's, it's, an X, it's an X cost it to tap an... to draw. Not even Would draw. Would you roll your dice? <laughs> <laughs> 19 uh, oh. investigation. Hold I know on. that's not enough, sorry. <laughs> 19 is 21. 21. 21. 21. 21. Look, this is 21. a lamp. I think you pick it up and you're hoping that it might be magical in nature, but it's not big enough to hide a weapon and it's not the right place. I'm still taking it. You, hey, go for it. Hey, you got a minute on the room and start playing Marco Polo with it? <laughs> that would be crazy. Uh, Shark, you're up. Is picking something up an action? Um... Depends on what you mean. Like if you're picking up like a boulder. Oh, I see. So I'm just going to pick up this sword. Okay. It's a broken relic of a sword. Probably like a stagecraft production. Gotcha. Um, and now that I've got that in my hand, I'll run into this room. Okay. And I, I'm going to smash the case. Hmm. Uh, let's go luck. 10% chance on a d20. 19 or 20. Oh! <laughs> nice one. <laughs> so what happens is you have this sword. Yep. And you like rear up and you're going to smash it. And then you like, you look and you're like, oh, this is just a rapier. And actually the broken sword was an illusion. Oh. And you have found the actual weapon. Yeah. Woo! Yay! <laughs> you did it. There was a rapier inside of Onderil. That's so sad. The rapier was inside us all along. No, no, it's actually Narsil. It's, it's the shards. Sorry. Fucking stupid. You hear a slow clap from Pharaoh. Guys, I did it. Nice. You gonna use that rapier? I don't know yet. I'll let you know after Pharaoh tells me a little more about it. Uh, well, you're, you're so yes. you're finessey, let me tell you. Let's see. I don't think you can't give it to me. I think you can what use do you mean? it as a toothpick, actually. I can't use rapiers. Well, you can figure out what it does, can't you? Oh, yeah. It's like kind of. It's not like super in depth, though. Yes. Uh, Drew, I don't see it in the original notes for this arc. Do you remember exactly what it did? I know the two, the two modes. Oh, it's the one-shot kill sword that kills anything. Yes. 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 Yeah. You, can, you should be able to search it. Oh, it might, be, it might be one word. Let's see. It also makes him really smart. I'm going to swing it around a whole bunch. <laughs> well, you don't actually hit anybody with it. You point it at the ground where you want it to be, and then it drops I wonder if our notes on that day didn't say it, because they're not fully there. It's actually Virgil's sword. You just slash and make a portal, and you can just go wherever you want. Like and how to find it, but not actually what it does. So I wonder if the computer just like 
Didn't yeah, you? I could have put that or something. Okay. Um, what this is is a conductor's wand. Actually, there's no like handguard or hilt, but it is long and sturdy it's enough like to be a rapier, like a needle. Yeah. Uh, it had two modes um, going off memory here. The first was a start of the fight. It gave advantage on initiative, um, and then was the first. If they attacked first, it was a crit, maybe. Yeah, it's if you attack Ooh. before somebody does, then you get a crit. Yes, um, and then the final was if you kill an enemy or end the battle with a blow, it heals everyone based on the damage you deal at the time. That's sick. Yo. So it has two modes, like a curtain rise and a curtain close. What's the what's the Elden Ring rapier that you get from that Rogier? Don't look at me. You what just you, you just said a needle, and I immediately think Hollow Knight. Hey, yeah. Hugh. Yeah. C come over here. I'm coming. I don't know sure. why I have a stutter today. Um, Very powerful maybe item. Maybe. Yeah, that's a good point. It's scaring me. I need you to kneel. All right, I'm kneeling. He starts unbuttoning his pants. <laughs> How badly do you want? <laughs> wow. I regret making you kneel. Stand up. <laughs> you picked the right party member for the job, though. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. I'm standing up again. This is not nearly large enough for me. Yep. Would you like it? Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, I, I like them big, if you know what I mean. Oh, I get you. Big, round, and chunky. And I'm going to just toss it to him. I'll grab it and I'll, <laughs> now I'll stop doing my, my hand rapiers. I'll use a real rapier and then get him with a tiny hand. You can only have it if now you knight me and I'm going to kneel. All right, so I knight you. All right. say, Thank you. God it's yours. You've been dubbed. Yep. Yes. Sir Shark. Sir Shark. OBE. <laughs> Thomas Shelby. This has been wonderful. A true interesting moment in a shitty, shitty time in the world. You know what I mean? I think, now that I can call us friends and fellow thespians, perhaps I have another gift for you. Very proud of your efforts here on stage. Am and I being rewarded I because I gave my gift away? No, I, in all honesty, I just can't believe that you just found a way to be lucky enough for it to matter. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, he actually takes off his jacket. Um, and he offers it to the group. It's the like Fire Nation high collar mantle, uh, and he just kind of is like, any showman went to. I, I just know. put it on and then you it away. I'll take it. And you want to do a little Arcana check on it? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I'll take it and I'll just identify the little goober. Sure. We'll say that like this is you guys are having a short rest here, like talking through the lore or whatever. You're spending time looking at it. Roman Arcana. Wee. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Wow. Sorry. Just actually, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't. Un I just don't understand how. Head dies. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just not possible. It was dejected. I said it sad. I know you didn't mean to do this, but you put me in this position where it was. So yeah. Anyway, uh, this is what we're referring to as the mantle of mannerisms. Um, what it does mm. is it gives you advantage on performance checks, which is cool. Oh. But. Let's just say that you had a direct like, insight into a character motivation, perhaps Seven's chip. It would give you expertise in a relevant skill from that character. Uh, so, for example, uh, Snake, you would get expertise in stealth while you were in the role. That's cool. Nice. That's very cool. A7, mm -hmm. get yes. on over here. <laughs> clank, 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 <laughs> clank. <laughs> nice. I'll meet you halfway. You're kind of slow today. <laughs> Here you go. Try this on for size. Thank you. I flourish it around my Whoa. around oh, my neck me a little bit fit me it on. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> There's oh. lots of tassels. Yeah, Seven. Knowing what that does, can I try something? Sure. What happens with this chip with the mantle? I'm gonna <laughs> pop it. What was this one called? <laughs> I think it was like the tunneled, maybe. <clears throat> ah, the tunnel. Yeah, here. I'm just. Do, do I have your consent? <laughs> I think this is about the most, like, the best time for well, it. Look at me, it's your character. <laughs> Given I, current events. I gave you the tools. You guys can burn the house down. That's sure. Fine. Well, he wouldn't have been in the news otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> True. I love this mantle. <laughs> it's a fantastic mantle. I put this mantle on. I said, wow, it's so soft. <laughs> so soft on the nape of my neck. Wow. Do, do you feel like they're, you're better at a skill right I now? I feel like I could do anything, to be honest with you, Shock. I feel like I could 
I, this would probably give, and we'll, as the rules come, right, this is a very flexible item. I think this is probably expertise on performances. <laughs> He's really good it's a at buff golf to intelligence, now. right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, I was gonna gonna say persuasion. So like, auto, auto crits the, on there's persuasion. There's the god. We found the god. It's hmm? over. You can't <laughs> yeah. uh, But in this case, <laughs> um, you'll get. And on the third day. And on the third day. <laughs> <laughs> So you'll get double your uh, proficiency bonus to performance while you're wearing this, as well as advantage. Um, that's what that means for future efforts. Okay. So the item will scale with you, but I cannot wait to see what you do with all of your past rolls and the ones to come. I'm gonna very. I'm gonna take that back for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you're not you when it's in. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> I'll keep that safe. <laughs> What's the real quick? What does the rapier do besides heal heal on killing blows? What else was it? Only if it's the last, like kill of combat. It's like if you, uh -oh. it's like curtain close. If you kill the last person, you'll heal everyone for the damage. When the curtain rises, the, the beginning, it gives you advantage on initiative. And then if you hit someone before they go, you get a crit. Gotcha. Which is kind of sick. All right. Um, is it every time initiative resets, he gets the crit or is it only one time per combat? Uh, it's, it happens, it can only happen one time per combat unless he gets multiple attacks on multiple yeah. people for some reason. But basically, in that first round, if he goes first and hits someone, it's a crit. Okay, uh, okay. Um, so you guys are here in this performing arts center and Pharaoh has a very satisfied look on his face. He's wearing like just a, like a scarlet shirt now, like a button up, he doesn't have his cool jacket. And he says, this has been great. I just love this, but truly, I can't think of anything else to make you do. I've, I feel satisfied. Did you say you were gonna make me a god? Yeah. What? Someone's got to be. Fair enough. I'll accept the roll. And he does a sweeping back. So are we done? Can we do it? <laughs> we actually have to do it. Oh. Do, uh, do you know how? Ah. Well, I mentioned that a large divine power in the East, yes. So we've got to go there and take care of business, as it were. Honestly, it's, a, it's very powerful. I'm sure we'll just kind of have, I don't know. Honestly, I, could, I, I don't have this play written down. Anything else? I'm ready to go talk to the college guy. Well, I don't think we talked to anyone. Okay. We yeah, we really just need the papers. Kind of yeah, we gotta get his papers. Mm -hmm. mm, yes. Talk and to him through his work. Yes. And I fix the glasses I don't have. I can re decipher it. I'll be able. We'll have a lovely trip. Okay. Do you, you want to come in? Oh, of course. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I allow a man his dramatic goodbye. Be safe. Take care. Well, you can still the city work. is dangerous. He's like crying fake tears and turns his head. I'm, I'm starting to fan girl over Pharaoh a little bit, so I <laughs> bow a little bit and I say, thank you for your gracious hosting, sir. Uh, he gives you like a one-upping deeper bow and he says, the show goes on and friends were made. <laughs> and he like makes an exit, but then like you can see him walking through the windows like back around to the front door to go with you guys. <laughs> You can wish us to have like a nice trip for yourself too. Like it still makes sense. Uh, I do you say that out loud? Yeah, it's he okay. like he's wearing like a different colored shirt and like his entertainer's mask. He like puts it on and it's like slightly different. He comes in, he goes, "Hello, I'm Farah. Who is this guy? I'm a city goer. I work in the industry. I got a <laughs> oh, I'm rolling investigation. All right." 25. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to call for a dice roll, but now that you've done it, you nail it. It's him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't tell anyone. <laughs> where, did, where did Pharaoh go? Why did he leave us? <clears throat> uh, I don't know, man. Hmm. Brother. All right, let's leave. Okay, you guys step outside. Yay! Um, it is once again day, but it is actually morning of the following day. Uh, you guys spend an entire day in this realm, but you don't feel tired, actually. Um, there's like a kind of like a um, renewal of energy. You guys are excited to go about your day. Um, so we're gonna skip ahead to the next day. And you guys, I believe, are making your way to the college, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, is this day three or four? This was, we went, you guys took a one and then a two, and this would have been travel on three, but there was a balloon involved, so three, travel here. This should be day of four, I believe, because I the, so, yeah. the, oh, if we skip a day, it's day of five, actually, because I remember explaining the clock tower team was fighting at night, so that would have been night. Yes, day of five, because we skip a whole day. 
Uh, it is day of five. You guys know that at sundown today, the bomb's going off. Um, but the objective for this loop was to go and get the notes out of the college. Hugh, do you prep the team for battle knowing what's there? Yeah, there's a lot of like bad shit there. I think if you do pass without trace, I can sneak through this time though. Okay. It's worth a try. Then we don't have to fight everything because it's a lot. Yeah, it's worth a try. Yeah, do we still have Pharaoh with us? Yeah, he's uh, Pharaoh in the green is with you, yes. It's and he like is exaggeratedly walking different. Yeah, you guys can distract Pharaoh and I'll see if I can get by him this time with an extra bonus to my stealth. So you guys are, are laying out a pretty strong plan. You've, you've done this move before and it will likely work. But there's one thing you didn't see with the exception of Stewie, which is when you get to the gates of the college, Frank Lee is actually standing there pacing in ghost form angrily. Uh, the professor from the college originally. You met him by the bomb. And he, he's amongst all the other guys? He is the only ghost here, actually, um, at the kind of the gates of the school grounds. And he's like upset, visibly. OK. Um, do I see any other things around right now? You guys are kind of at like. <laughs> I'm, I'm scared this is fair, a trap. <laughs> fair. To paint a picture, you're at like the outside of a college gate. Think like large wrought iron, like ornate kind of tall fence with the, not exactly spikes, but sharp points on the top and like a big like opening where, uh, you know, college size gate, which carts and wagons and, you know, things could go through. Uh, and it, it empties out into like a, a pretty large yard uh, with some fountains. You recognize the building as like that big square and the main entrance to that courtyard is right ahead a couple hundred feet as well. He, you guys are fully removed from the college campus. You're kind of at that front gate. That's where he is. Okay. As far as like other movement and undead, no, there's nothing you see here, but you're welcome to make perception checks in case there's anything hiding. I'm going to go up and talk to him. Okay. So Stewie, you guys are planning, right? Stewie sees a ghost and she kind of rushes forward. Uh, and he's muttering, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. My own son. My own son. Unbelievable. Who's your son? Ha! Hi. Do I know you? Uh, no, but I think I might know you. Are you Frank? Ah, my reputation precedes me. Yeah, um, your reputation of not having the best warding spells. What? I think, possibly, I don't know, somebody was shitting on you earlier. Did I fail you? Uh, the bomb? Does what? that ring a bell? No. Okay, well, we need your papers. <sighs> did you, did you forget your homework? Yeah, I did. I think I left it in your desk. I think third left drawer down. Uh, this is actually a pretty good lie. Um, give me a uh, persuasion check with deception. deception. Yeah, excuse me, with advantage. Oh, she needs it. I rolled an 18, so I was just seeing oh. if I can do a 20. Okay. <laughs> How, what's the total? Uh, with deception, <laughs> it is a, I can't do math, t 28. Ooh. No, yeah. wait, uh, 27, 27. Mm, that's you have a plus nine to deception. Yeah, I holy can, shit, that's crazy. That seems high. Plus nine. <laughs> we should have had you lying. No, so 18, 18 plus nine, Super right? Twenty-seven. Okay, all right. I, was, I can do I thought that. I was say, Hell yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. Okay, um, he he is just exasperated. This. I wish I could help you with these papers. Unfortunately, my worst protege of a son stole all of my work, all of it. My it's, homework too. Everything. My proprietary sigils, my recipes, my formulas, my greatest works. And he probably is off gallivanting in this damned summer hideout just on over by the damn mountains. And I, I don't even, I'm dead. Yeah, me too, man. Um, so where, what mountains? And there's nothing here. He stole all of it? Yeah, everything of substance. Okay, my homework is what I mean. <laughs> oh. Yes, uh, why are you... Well, I wanted to make sure I didn't turn it in late. So where d is his summer hideout? Are you going to get it? Yeah. An overachiever. I can't believe I don't recognize you from... Which class was it? Biology. <laughs> <laughs> You've already succeeded, so he's like... <laughs> oh, I, when I was an adjunct back in the long time ago. Before right. I was tenured, of course. Uh, he says, do, by chance, do you have a map? Uh, I think one of my friends does, yeah. Uh, you guys are still having a planned meeting. Do you guys break for a moment? How do you get their Psst. attention? Okay. <laughs> guys. Um, what? I know it looks like I'm talking to myself. And frankly, I don't give a damn if you think that. 
but uh, I've got some news. Where's the map? <laughs> I'm going to pull it out of my pants. Okay, can you see this map? Mm, yes. Where are we going? I mean, he points to the hole in the map and says, strange, there. So this is a summer hideout. Oh, a family home, but at well, one point it was the place we went to. Where, what, which one are we on right now? We're all the way at the bottom. Yeah, so the it's literally on the other yeah. side. Okay. So this is where the papers and my homework. I assume. Okay. I haven't been there. Every time we were finishing up, we upside down. Well, I think I'm going to see if my friends want to go that way or if we want to explore here. Oh, oh, be careful. There are intruders on the grounds. Thank you. Mm hmm. Is there anybody in particular you want us to take care of? Oh, I don't. There's a lot of bad, undead things. Probably wouldn't even go in. What's your son's name? Uh, his name is, I actually wrote this down. Is he still oh, living um, or is he like you? Solemn is his name. He, uh, solemn? Solemn. Uh, garbage, horrible student, ingrate, not worthy of my legacy. You know, please. there's still hope for him. I used to be the same type of student. Well, but look I'm at me now, an overachiever. Thank willing you. Willing to travel at least a whole week fighting through undead to get her homework. Unbelievable. <laughs> Literally unbelievable. Except for I believe it. <laughs> 28 worth of believing. 28 <laughs> worth of believing. <laughs> hey, ask him if he knows a magical way for us to travel f quickly. Oh, yeah. Around. Do you have any spells that would help us get there faster? Or maybe like. Not my purview, unfortunately. Or no. Do you know somebody who might? Well. Every amount of magic I have, my son pilfered, his greedy damn hands. That damn son. Yes. Um, I suppose you could look in the college, but truly it is a dangerous place. Hey, Stewie, can he, it, hear me? Can you hear everybody? Yes. Did yeah. go say what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Did I get him? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Farah is giggling. <laughs> Do you uh, know Farah? Who? Our new friend. The it in green. I don't know their pronouns. <laughs> Another student? Yeah. They're uh, ac they're in like, you know, theater. Uh, theater kids, you know. Theater. No, I don't recognize them. No, oh, that's all right. Interesting. Okay, well, was there anything else? I don't think so, unless, do you guys have any other questions? I don't know if you heard me talking to myself or not. Ask him if there's anything we need to get here, or if it's all at the summer hideout. He said nothing of value was really here. It's really dangerous. Nothing? Nothing at all? Before, this is still a magical college. Oh, sure, if they wanted to break in and look through various notes of other professors, I suppose, but none of my things are still here. Is there any kind of, like, great weapons or...? Not that kind of place. It was, this was a college of protection. Mm hmm We don't need that. My pro oh, uh, to illustrate, my personal spell book, also missing. Your son took it. I see. Okay. Don't worry. I'll get solemn and... Okay, but don't cheat on the upcoming exams. I would never. I'm going to change the answers. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, should we go to the summer hideout? Thank you. Bye. Oh, I think um, we have to die first. Yeah, we got to die. <laughs> we have to yeah, die so first. Should we just go to the college just to see what's there? We're yeah. going to die anyway. We're going to blow up anyway. Out of... Um, out of in ga out of game. Are the one-shot characters still here, or have they already... So you saw them, I guess two nights last. They were doing the, like, the exact same loop that you guys had seen. By now, uh, we're on day of five, so last night you guys were, you spent in the, like, domain of Pharaoh. Would have been the night they fired out of the cannon okay. and splattered into a, some kind of magic barrier. Okay, okay. Um, so, no... Although Baron von Gorbelworm was... Gorbelworm is still there. And? And Mala. Mala. Well, here's the thing. If the clock tower Mala is Shen. not <laughs> in... <laughs> if the clock tower is not in the square we're in, we're not getting uh, to yeah. Oh, that's yeah. what that's... Yeah. It's two to the right. Good point. Guys, and I'm going to hold out my javelin. I can start this over now. <laughs> no. Well, we might as well investigate <laughs> to see if we can beat something in there. No. Okay, I'm going to... You said there's nothing really in... None of his shit's well, in there? some stuff I, I mean, could we could probably... Maybe. Try to go Mother see what we can fucker. find. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Another reset. <laughs> you want to try fighting those guys that killed you? Not see, really. If we're gonna reset, well, we're gonna reset anyway. Just have fun with it. Maybe we can find a cool thing in there. 
Or we can I have something I can do that's going to take us no time, so we can still die right now. But mm -hmm. if we're going to reset on a day, I could use a really powerful spell to do something. Oh. Yeah, see if you can just wipe them all out in one blow. No, it's not going to be combat related. <laughs> oh, okay. What's Go ahead. Do, do you. Can I uh, meditate for 10 minutes and perhaps use legend lore? What does legend lore do? Oh. Legend lore says name or describe a person, place, or object. Mm -hmm. This spell brings to your mind a brief summary of the significant lore about the thing you named. <laughs> this might consist of current tales, forgotten stories, or even secret lore that has never been widely known. Like his spell book, perhaps? Like, or like low. For that those? has components, though. Those we could probably put together uh, 250 mean? gold. Maybe, I think kind of? Pharaoh says. He reveals that it's, it was him the whole time. He Dang. goes back to his, yeah. What? Now, this could be interesting. And if it's interesting, I'd be willing to commit a little burglary in several jewelry stores that I know nearby. But where are we going with this? What does that have to do? Well, he needs well, need Oh, oh gems. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were like, I'll go rob I'll shit. go rob something <laughs> if we're all going to blow <laughs> up. <laughs> do you guys think this is worth it? Might as well. We yeah, could, could, could we learn about his dad? I was going to say, I could yeah, say, I can low, name yeah. We could also for try and read his spell book so we don't have to travel all that way. Right? Well, it's like, is that, it's, it's, not, it's like a background on it. It's not. Tales, forgotten stories, and I could also do the museum. I could do the bar. I was going to say, we could do the. Well, we know the bar. Tenders the we the know AI. what he's told us. But we also know he's just the right hand man who's locked down by dad. We could also we could do he's low. We could do the uh, one of the curators too. Yeah, museum or low is really good. I'd say museum or low. So if you want to go oh, we can run some Satchel. stuff lore. Or what we could do, we could do three more resets and just spam this, like him going and burglaring and then doing it again. We can just go to the beach and be like, hey, anyone got some gold on you? Yeah, and talking, we just do it like three times. I picked up the Pharaoh mask and put it on and went, hey guys, I'm Pharaoh. Well, he's doing that. I put on the owlbear mask and I become an owlbear. <laughs> 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 well, let's go rob jewelry stores. Okay. He's panicking. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm receiving off-screen guidance from my own augury. It is going well. Uh, have you settled on a name? Settled on a name? Mm -hmm. I would lean toward low fructose. I would say I that's mean, a good call. He's the only one that's like guaranteed being mean. <sighs> Drew, is it too early for a particular lore regarding the bartender? No. <laughs> <laughs> because We're to the point that they're casting legend lore yeah, yeah. to find information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fucking curtain is rising. Buddy. This is this is exactly what I think Pharaoh mm -hmm. says. So this is when he says, "Now that's cool," or. I know something you don't know about a particular bartender. Just saying. Anyway, jewelry store's this way, and he walks off. So are you saying it's one or the other? Because what if we asked him, fear. and then we just go rob the jewelry stores? I'm just Pharaoh. <laughs> <laughs> Where did Shark go? <laughs> I'm going to sneak behind a building and take the mask off and pop back out. Oh, hey, there you go. I is. think Hi. in character, or out of character, I think Falar would choose the bartender. Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah. Especially because he's making deals with you. You can just yeah. cast that later as long as the mask doesn't kill you. Yeah, that's fine. Well, right. if it kills you, it resets us. Yeah, that's so. true. I want to know about the bartender. Okay, um, so you, you, you've resolved bartender. Um, and Pharaoh is kind of walking down the street. Um, there's an interesting, um, like, like a fish swimming upstream, right? You can visually see the water being displaced on either side of Pharaoh. And what is happening is he's, he's like redirecting parts of the city to move undead away from you guys. So you guys can see like zombies coming and like a cart will kind of roll a little bit and it will like redirect the mindless undead either way. So it's, this is my domain and I believe that we're coming to the end of yet another loop. So we really don't have time for Silly combats. Anyway, and uh, he walks over to like just a, a regular mom and pop jewelry store, um, and he goes, "I've always wanted to do this." And he just you know wraps his elbow in like a jacket and smashes the window, <laughs> and he like starts putting them in like a comical bag with like a dollar sign on it. And he goes, <laughs> "Yes, here you go." So I'll take all the jewelry. Mm -hmm. uh, weren't you going to tell me about the bartender? Oh no, I just heard that you had one shot at an interesting question. And I thought, 
Why not make it a little more fun? Okay. Well, are we safe here? Can I do my thing? Eh, I can promise you at least until sundown. I'm back in the Pharaoh mask. This guy sucks. <laughs> ah, everyone's a critic. He was like, I know something you don't know. And it's like, yeah, that's why we're doing the spell. And then <laughs> real know. quick, all at the same time, I'm going to pop the mask off and straighten my tie and say the thing. We already did this. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to roll the save. All right. I rolled a unnatural 20. Okay, I got higher. Do I get to get Objection. Higher? All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's the thing you know about the bartender that we don't know? I'm just not going to tell you. Fuck, I forgot he had that choice. <laughs> what if I say please? Oh, you got... No. What if we had a really, really persuasive person who could do it? We're in the zone of truth. Do you have plus nine persuasion? I think. Well, oh, oh, I mean that's really good that's too. We have two okay. people. Send in the the first line and second line. I'll, I'll have the chip at the ready. <laughs> I have minus three to persuade. Oh. Him, so I don't think. Stoy. Do you have a place that would make him really persuasive? Mm -mm. Stoy. Pretty, pretty, please. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you put it that way, <laughs> absolutely not. Do you want me to roll? You can roll, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be hard, oh. though. No. That was a uh, 13. Uh, it's time for it's, the big guns. <laughs> this is supremely uninteresting. You finding the answers on your own with forbidden power given to you by a shadow assassin. That's so cool. All right, I'm trying one more thing, and I'm <laughs> popping it in. <laughs> You're a <our> last hope. <laughs> I guess I'll go ahead and make my <laughs> roll. <laughs> So what is it? What is it? Plus. So one? what's your normal roll? Uh, uh, minus three. For okay. Persuasion. Are you normally uh, proficient in it? I assume no. Is it now? So I think right now your proficiency bonus is a three. Okay. So those will cancel out, and then you get another plus three. Okay. So it's just plus three. Great. Nat twenty. Twenty three. Was it nat twenty? Oh. It was a nat twenty. No. <laughs> I roll the best dice. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. He's rolling so many dice. Two You've been t roped Two episodes ago, someone said the game will be easy because with dice rolls like this. And then I was like, haha, not really. And then you did the Nat 20 call out. And then last episode, they were like, the game was easy because of the dice rolls. And you did the Nat 20 and the <laughs> 7 call out. And I was like, yeah, no, we're probably done with that. And now we did the damn Nat 20 call out. Oh, man. Cough it up. Right. <laughs> I, I think he's just taken so aback by this, right? Uh, and he goes, <gasps> An even more legendary performer than I? <laughs> Impossible! Okay, you've got me. Um, and, uh, God, I think I'm just gonna do it, you think? Yeah. Yeah, all right. So, he says, I won't give it all away. I think it'd be fun for you to have your own <sighs> challenge. Before the break, we were confronted with lore. Mm -hmm. Now, I just wanna clarify. I believe you were asking to squeeze a little information from Pharaoh about the bartender, and then you were planning to cast legend lore on low fructose, correct? Ding, ding, ding. That is the idea. You do your amazing performance. You, you guys are here in the middle of an abandoned street. He, Pharaoh is dressed as like a comic burglar with like a ski mask and a bag. He's handing you the jewels um, and he, literally says, it's not happening, you'll never convince me, and you put on this amazing, amazing performance. And it's so enthralling that he immediately says, I recognize that I am not the best performer here, it is you. And he says, in respect to a performer of your caliber, I'll tell you one interesting thing about the Bart. And actually, now that I think about it. No, I won't. It ties into the whole legend thing you're about to do as well. So, the bartender, what, what do you know? What do you know? My dad's right hand man. Is that it? Yeah, and he's got a bow he, that makes him not able to Yep, he can't talk to the, to the bow tie. No. He's trying to get into the museum. He's got some pretty magical power. He was like teleporting his way to those little rooms. He doesn't know how to make an espresso martini. Hmm. The bartender's name, you know? Thalo. Hmm. He's old. Do you wonder where he came from? I don't really. 
Well, based on his name, maybe he, maybe Low actually created him. That would be cool. Because they Low. Okay. <laughs> I'm just Farah. <laughs> Wait, his name is The Low. He just is Low. That's way better than anything I was going to say. <laughs> no, although interesting. It wasn't like that. You see, the museumites, the performers in your previous roles were indeed led by low fructose. Yes, of course, of course. But that man, Thalo, as he goes by now, was once a god on a warring planet filled with celestial castoffs. And he abandoned that role to pursue the museum, an actual god. Insane! But we eventually dug into his calling. I just can't remember what his name was. It was something... <sighs> Checks notes, hang on. <laughs> uh, which god were you hmm? planning on making Thalo? Because I think I had a couple written I'm down. I'm curious what, which one you think based on that. Clip. I would have said... Uh, Exo... And that's the one. Okay. How do you know that? Because I'm from that same planet. <gasps> wow. <laughs> what a twist. Interesting. <laughs> I forgot your story. <laughs> so are you telling me the bartender is my dad? No. Yes. Not it. You know when you take on a new role, it's a new life, a new face, a new challenge. So no, but yes. Anyway, have fun with that. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, that wasn't entirely helpful. <laughs> it's cool to know, though. It was, it was interesting information. <laughs> well, I didn't say it would he, be helpful. If he Just used to be a god, that's got to be a really, really, really strong bow tie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true. Anyway, I'm, I'm thinking that info was more helpful for Valar yeah. than it was any of us. Helpful is the right word, but it's definitely something. It's definitely something. I'm going to lower the fair mask and smash my elbow through the jewelry store window. <laughs> <laughs> now you're getting it. Would uh, out of game, would a recap of my lore help you understand? Oh, uh, Why don't you? Just yeah, because it's yeah. been 30 episodes. Yeah, so essentially... Exo, I'm an Asimar, which is half celestial. Um, my parent celestial being Exo, who uh, t went from celestial to what demon is the he opposite? basically fell fell from grace, and thus the kids of Exo were exiled from the community they were in, and then slaughtered by a different celestial. Oh, okay. um, so this would be my parent deity. The one he has been pursuing to kill. I think he's had daddy issues in this game. A lot of daddy issues in this yeah. game. It's kind of a recurring theme. Yeah. I don't have a father. <laughs> That's <laughs> like we said. <laughs> no shot. Uh, anyway, also I believe... to be a shark. That's so true. That sorry, sorry. No, yeah, sorry. Uh, I believe you're in the middle of the other lore thing you wanted to do, which was? Uh, yeah. Well, once I've processed this information um, and had a little bit of an existential crisis, <laughs> I will uh, concentrate for 10 minutes and cast uh, Legend Lore. Okay. You're not familiar with arcane magics. So you're borrowing this hood, right? This assassin's hood um, that's giving you magic that uh, you know is like slightly different than usual. How, are, how do you think you're going to get this like legend lore is like knowledge going to fill you or are you gonna like see kind of like scraps of paper flowing by i'm curious what the, what you think this magic looks like in your case hmm i think it would have to kind of fuse with the magic i know so it has to probably be like light based um i think i would maybe like when i open my eyes maybe the light would be refracting in front of me from like a light source and it would kind of play out whatever is Okay. So Maybe you think like right here in the shape of a ding. light bulb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want a light bulb? <laughs> I don't, but <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> no, we'll say that exactly as you've said, right? Um, you're seeing like an illustrated play of like instead of like gestures or shadows, it's like 
figures of light. Um, and you have an innate comprehension, magically, of what this actually means. And what you're seeing from start to finish is like a representation of low fructose's career as um, like a, a museum employee, for lack of a better term, uh, the junior curator that he was. He is plucked from you know his regular life and the rest of his team, you see them flashing between exotic places, uh, adventuring and like taking on the life of a junior curator where they're going, they're solving problems, they're fixing things, they're collecting something, they're making the museum bigger until uh, he gets to Hugh's home planet where there is a uh, kind of you know, romantic moment and ultimately the break that removes him from the museum where he goes on basically insanity. Um, you see him come back to the museum and he steals what is something marked as a universal foundational relic, a UFR of power, and using that, um, that you kind of like see where he's taking it from. It's the exhibit of Synosia, the desert planet, or the picture you guys saw. Um, it had been unburied there and they had reclaimed it for the first time. He takes that and with that he's able to just leave this universe and this museum uh, and start causing problems. You see him appearing in places like even uh, like looking at uh, various like realms like Dino Rodeo and things like that. But now he's on a planet called Pinnacle um, and he is causing problems there, uh, upsetting the natural balance. And it's very clear that whatever he's doing on Pinnacle is like an attempt to sway local factions to just burn it to the ground and find something for him. Um, you would surmise he thinks there's another relic on said planet. Um, I'm curious what you do with this information though. Do you tell your party or your group? Yeah, I don't think I would hide this from at least Hugh. So you speak it out loud? Um, yeah. When you say the word pinnacle, you have a memory gap just immediately fill in. It's the name of your home planet. <gasps> he is there burning it to the ground right now. That motherfucker. That motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I told them we shouldn't have let them in. <laughs> Did anybody else think of Pinnacle Whip when you said Pinnacle? Thank God. A lot of information there, gentlemen. Wow. How do you feel about this, you? I knew he was a bad guy. That's why I'm trying to kill him. Mm -hmm. we, know where, we know where he is now. Yeah. Business is, and that's your home planet? Yes, we must go there immediately after. Oh, fixing. your chip fell out a little bit. I'll oh. push back in. <laughs> that piece of shit. <laughs> he, he went to my turf. He, he starts fucking up everything. I'm, I'm so pissed. I, 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 I heard the word pinnacle. I said, wow, I'm so pissed at this. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving this speech. And like Pharaoh, like like kind of steps away from you guys, and he goes, "Oops!" And a building falls on you, on me, <laughs> on everyone. No, so oh, never reset. And he goes, "Next time, <laughs> you guys uh, disappear and go back into the bar, um, where this time the bartender is not there." Is there a hole in the wall? Nope. I'm gonna flip the. Light switch. It's just like him. We find yeah. out he's crooked and he, run, <laughs> and he runs and hides. <laughs> uh, I, actually, I will say it looks like it, like someone was in the middle of mixing a drink and it's like it got knocked over. Um, so oh, they muddled the mixture. <laughs> You're welcome. Can I go behind the bar? Uh, sure. Can I just take a look, see if there's anything that would be interesting? Oh, I'm yeah. not going to make us a drink. Okay, Stewie comes up with you. I want to make myself a drink, but first I want to see what's interesting. You guys get there, and it was like, if you've ever seen bartenders like creating yes. new cocktails, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm proud of you for admitting that, that you've seen a bartender in your life. I really appreciate that. He was in the middle of making different cocktails, right? So he's got glasses of different sizes, like the garnish of different sizes, several cut up like citrus fruits. Um, and whatever one he was in the middle of is just spilled over fully on the counter. Um, and it's like the floor mat he would stand on is like shoved aside like someone took off in a hurry. Uh, Stewie comes up alongside you and- Oh my God, he was making a Tom Collins. What does that tell you? <laughs> you use your bar detective. Something sour is afoot. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. That's so much better than I could have. All right, it. I'll leave. Sorry. <laughs> that was so good. 
you're over there. The TV is on, right? You can see your mom uh, like filing away like objects, and you're like flicking it, and the light keeps just going on and off, and she's just like m- mad and like yelling at the ceiling, being like, "Stupid museum! I can't even start the lights!" And then she's like, "I'm gonna tell Freddie about this," and she walks off like trying to get Freddie. Flip through the channel, see if he's there. Oh, give me, let's do a little luck. Only d20. Hmm, six. You luckily TV breaks. Flip, uh, flip to Freddy and see your mom come in and start yelling at him. And then we disappear. We reappear on the lander. Liv is there, whoa, oh my god, you guys are here, it's crazy, my whole squad died, you guys want to do a whole war thing? Bones are flying all over the place. Loop number, I don't know, even I'm confused, 11, 12, 13. <laughs> <laughs> so now we beeline to the hideout. Yeah, don't well, we have... On. There's like... Balloon again? Yeah. We have balloon, we also have a oh, free one, square. Oh, just the one, you never climbed So we one. can use a boat to get one free square east. And mm-hmm. we can use the balloon to get one free square anywhere. So we should figure out the best way to, to go, probably. What is your plan? So we could go... Wait, because we're here, right? Mm-hmm. So we could free square, which brings us here. Balloon free square, which brings us here. The free square for the boat is the middle top. Ah. So we'd have to walk so we one. Go boom. Free square. Free here. Then balloon down. Balloon, I would say, angled, yeah. which can get us here. Yeah. yeah. Is the star free? So that would take us two no, days. No, star was something cool in there, right? Star where? Uh, oh, the temple. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Below temple. Right below temple. That was something we never got, right? A little item. Um, it was. Oh, yeah, that's what she told us. It was a strong item there that we never. Went she to. said it was kind of to the south. The actual item is, if if I think she did give you the items, uh, like location, it's southeast one. Of oh, the jelly. Mm-hmm. The cloak of the jellyfish. Cloak of je- oh, I forgot that it was it's southeast thing. of where it is now. The temple, yeah. If there's oh, like a yeah, 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 it's one square over. Yep, yep. yep. got it. All right. So do we do what we just said? Sure. Just yeah, speed over. Mm-hmm. So this is day and night of one doing the invasion, all that shit. You guys are there in two, then there in three. But this would be free, but right? Yeah. The next one, they're both free. One of them is free. It doesn't matter. So ah. there in three, then there in three, right? Because of the free square. Yep. So here's three. You're gonna take the balloon. Yep. Okay. So I think we said it skips a whole square. Did so we do balloon that? balloon two summer right there. House. So on day of three, we're at the summer house. Yeah, we'll do it that way. Which, if, if it moves diagonally, it functionally skips two technically because you have to go down. You're to the right. describing the age-old question of Dungeons and Dragons, which is: is a diagonal square five foot? I'm just, or I'm just explaining the balloon's sick. You're welcome. It is sick. You're welcome. Uh, and we'll just say day of three. If you've broken the arc and the power balance is fucked up, that's fine. We're on number sixteen. I'm yeah. doing. We this. haven't broken so anything. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Infectious. So you guys are gonna ride the balloon into victory, right? I demand that you do this thing where you talk on the radio. Do it. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I think it's like call sign. Oh, you have to kiss first. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to kiss first. Oh, establish yeah. radio. Land one on me. <laughs> oh god. I come over and I just fucking. And he feels a little, it feels a little different than the last time because it's powered. Yeah. It's enforced with the magical, magical power. Hello. <laughs> Authentication. Fly high. <laughs> Fly high, they say. All right, uh, you get the balloon delivered, it lands, you guys are able to put it together and you, whew, you take off. Uh, and you appear on a new map. <gasps> Whoa! Ooh. This is... Charlie Indigo. Mm-hmm. You appear here. Somehow, Foray forgot to move last turn, has joined the room like 11 times. You guys see that? I am like signed in, so that way it remembers my account. I don't know what's happening. Okay. <laughs> I apologize for that. That's fine. Oh, that's okay. a spooky summer house. It is a spooky yes. summer house. I uh, see blood. I you guys tokens. Blood. This is Mar-a-Lago. Um, the closer you guys get to the southeast part of the map, the more like the daylight is drained. I can't believe you said that. The daylight is drained from uh, the sky. Like it, it's almost like that old timey like filter for horror movies. Um, as like clearly there is an unsettling magical presence uh, that is doing something to the sky and the time around it. So it is, I believe, we said day of three, maybe moving into night, but it is darker than usual. Um, 
This looks like maybe it was like a large family home or perhaps like maybe like a renovated old cathedral, um, but since has been just utterly you know, destroyed um, by what looks like a lot of moving troops or people or something that have kind of caused a lot of damage here. What do you do? I'm going to cast Divine Sense. Perception. Okay. You do Divine Sense. Um, this is desecrated ground. There is a natural evil that is so deep it is in every single grain of soil. It is bad place. There is actually bad I'll even, place. I'll even give you there is currently powerful magic coming from below you. We are in trouble. It is actively chasing us. Yeah, I rolled twelve. Okay. Yeah, no, there's a lot of rubble here. There's a lot to sort through. Wait, what's actually what's chasing after us? us? I'm feeling bad stuff coming at us fast. I, I think his secret. I think his secret lab yeah, of evil shit's downstairs. Oh, I'm gonna go in. Okay. You walk into the ruins. It's just covered in like. Broken two by fours, support beams, stones. Pretty big mess in here. You said you feel something below us. Uh, did we go down at all, or are we still? Yeah, this like a th this is like a small basement. Maybe that like dry roots and grain and stuff would be stored. Um, nothing that screams evil genius laboratory. If that's what you're asking. Is there I a can case? I can cast it again. Can I cast divine sense again? Yeah, you get the same feeling, right? Even the ground is desecrated. Are there's we there's a strong floor? evil magical presence. It's coming from below. Sorry. Is it a wooden floor? Um, good question. I would say it's partially wooden, but partially like worked tile. All right, I just want to slam my axe into it. Rolling some damage. Everybody, back up. Okay. Well, he's doing that. I'll search for a bookcase or something. I was gonna Give say. I'll do an investigation. Some investigations as well. Eighteen. Uh, Nat one. <laughs> I don't see shit, dude. Uh, what's my investigation? Plus eight. Twenty-six. Oh wow. Nice. Let's wait for him. That's pretty cool. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine damage. Yeah. I'm I assuming I just hit. I don't have to roll to hit. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. It's it's an object, right? Cool. It's just damage. There's like an innate hardness. I think you're gonna pick wood. Mm-hmm. So I think what happens here is, Hemp, you're looking around. He's like, we got to go down. Um, I'm rubbing my chin, chin, chin. I think you find like a place that looks like the ground would be weakest. Um, that's like very clearly maybe like just kind of lightly boarded over. And you point the shark cannon. And he just smashes through the woods like in, in seconds. Um, and congratulations, you've solved my... Uh, floor puzzle, and let's go yes. to... I know, it's crazy that you guys were able to see through this. Uh, we'll go here. I did it. I'm proud of you. Maybe we should all be barbarians. Oh, shit. I was shocked after your talk before the game. I thought you were going to shock us all and choose barbarian. <laughs> well, I do just as much damage as you sometimes. So Conditionally. It wouldn't make a ton of sense. With the crit, you probably will. Yeah, yeah, the you're, grid. You're gonna do a shit ton with that. Yeah. This is a your cool initi man. initiative die just have to be. This good. is a really cool man. You got fucked for some reason. There are some amazing creators out there. Check out the credits for who made this one. Okay. It's me. That's a joke. Now, this is where it opens up to. There is a ladder that was like kind of hidden here. Um, you guys don't like fall down. Mm -hmm. Who is first? I put your characters here because I assume eventually you guys will all come. But who's first? Feels like a me. Shark, it's pretty dark down here. There's like some smaller candles. Um, do you bring light down? I would probably be following him with light on my shield. Okay. The two of you are climbing down this like rusty old ladder and you enter just a room full of like in process coffins that have like people in various states of like preparation as like an old kind of mausoleum or like embalming station. Um, at least for now, there are no moving remains. Is it possible to kill something before it reanimates? Is that a thing? You can bind it. I'm asking people. Is that a thing? You, you like, if I were to go stab a dead guy, would it be unable to rise? I mean, it's already dead. But what you can do, though, is you can, like, hog tie it. Yeah. So and, anybody got some rope? I got, a, I got some rope. Should we start tying up dead people? Or if you decapitate it and it comes to life and then instantly goes, oh, and dies again, because he's like, fuck, my head's not here. What's the plan? Right now, you guys are downstairs. I'm giving you a moment as the advanced party to do something if you want. If not... How deep down, like how far is the ladder? Good question, maybe like 20 feet. Do you, could I detect magic a little bit to try and find like... The ritual casting or are you using... Um, I was going to take a little bit and ritual cast. Well, okay. it's a level one. Yeah, I'll ritual cast it. Okay, so it's going to take 10 minutes to do that, but you're going to start doing it. 
Yeah, okay. I think so. Uh, Wait, it's just a level one spell slot if I cast caster, right? Two, oh, okay. I was gonna say, let me just throw that level one spell slot out there. Okay, at least here, you don't actually sense any magics in this open hole. Now, beyond the doors, it's hard to tell. I will also say that you now have a little bit of the flavor of what he was talking about. There is just some really powerful magic seeping through the ground, but not in this room. Gotcha. Can you describe the coffins to me? Are they like wood? Are they stone? Yeah, yeah. they're mostly wood, and I would I feel like they're pretty old, and they, they even have like cobwebs and stuff on them. It's clear that they like haven't been interacted with in a long time, or like nothing has moved through or in or on them in a long time. Do they have latches? Um, yeah, I'd say that they probably have like pretty like primitive latches, like a uh, bad public restroom, like eye with the thing. You want to unlock all the coffins? Yeah, can we yeah. close and lock them all? <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> you guys come down the ladders and you see them just like being like, like closing the lid, closing the lid. Respecting the dead. Mm-hmm. Very big That's deal. nice. I just want to walk over and investigate this statue real quick. That is a closed door. Okay. <laughs> I want to walk over and open this door. Okay. Um, there is like a... Uh, it's almost like a shrine to Frank Lee, the guy that you've seen, but it's like made in jest. He has like big head and like a bunch of other stuff like graffitied on him, uh, done in a childish manner. Jesse's been here, his head's big. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing Jack too. There's probably even like that insane person writing on the walls being like, fuck you, I'm better than you, fuck you, I'm better than you, or like something like that. Guys, I think we found the right place. Good. Oh, run in the opposite direction. Characterize your entrance. How are you guys coming in? Uh, I get off the ladder and I start walking towards a door like this. Mm-hmm. Do you want you me to open go, it? Do you want me to go cool. first? Man, yeah. open it. Okay, I'm already open it. I'll flank them. This is more permanent housing of the dead. Um, these coffins are like nice and actually like sealed shut. Uh, but it's quiet in here. Pretty dark, but. Uh, you'll notice still burning candles as well. Mm-hmm. I can see in the dark and I know it's clear, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so then I'm just going to keep moving forward. Okay. Say so nothing cool to see here. Should we, Hugh, what if you sneak ahead and report back like what the situation is so we can be prepared when we like turn the corner? That sounds good to me, Roger. So now I'm doing it real stealthily, so I'm on my tippy toes. Still check. I like the idea that you just take your feet and turn them into big thumbs and you... I'm pointing at you, messaging with your mind. Twelve. Oh, me? No, I'm pointing at you, so I'm like, he can just report back. Got it. Okay, twelve. You do your best, but the problem is these doors are, they're old and creaky. It's not your fault. I mean, look, you're a professional, but no one's been down here to take care of the shit that actually cares. So, you know, you're, you are absolutely as stealthy as the wind, and you hear on every door, and it's just nothing you can do. Yep. Now, I will say, in this room, no motion. No undead, nothing. All right, so I'm coming through. Whoop, you. Are you... Pause uh, at this door. Let's see where everyone travel else is going. with you, or would you prefer to go alone? No, you guys can come. Okay. It's all clear. He was making the, like the... Yeah. Okay, he's like waving you guys to come up. Wait, where did I just go? All right, so set yourselves up for this room for when Hugh goes in. I want to flank Hugh when he goes in. Okay, you open the final door. Inside this room, there are two people of substance. Um, We'll use probably this one. And we'll use this As one. As the door was opening, I clicked my boots speed together. <laughs> I still have major armor. Fair, fair enough. That's oh my god. Boy. Oh shit. I will describe them in a moment. Let's roll initiative. Yay. Yay. Eighteen. Eighteen for seven. 16. I got a ten. I got a ten as well. Ten for yeah. Valar. How much for him? Eight. Eight for Hugh. I got an unnatural 20. Unnatural 20 for a? Uh, 19. Okay, and the shark? Uh, 10. 
then. Okay. Um, there are two figures in here. The first is like, what you would see is, or know is like a young 20s, maybe late teens guy, with the exception of his skin is like utterly stretched tight to bone. There's no meat left on it. He's like a leathered skeleton. Um, he is in the middle of doing some kind of magic. There is glowing runes on the floor. The large creature next to him is like 10 to 12 corpses that have been like fused together to make a giant. So like his leg is like three torsos, like kind of stitched together. Um, he is kind of like a remainder of a bunch of bodies that have just been magically animated. That is not it, unfortunately, as behind you guys, uh, we're gonna use these. Uh, several like strange humanoid creatures with like long tails kind of drop down from the rafters above. Um, and you guys are finding yourself surrounded on both sides. Did he use a spell for that? Uh, no. Okay. But you also would not have known. He, yeah. If you're asking when you walk through, does he like summon guys? No. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, let's go with Hemp, you're up first. Alrighty. How many guys are there behind us? Two that you can see, unless you'd like to maybe look for more. Um, hmm. Let's see what I got right here. You know what, I think I'm gonna cast on... That big guy looks like quite an idiot, I would say. Maybe. I'm gonna cast Tosh's Hideous Laughter. Mm, what's the save? The save is 16 and I believe it's Wisdom. Let me see. Should be. One second, I'm remembering how to spell hideous. We haven't fought in a while, so I get it. Uh, wisdom. Well, he gets a seven. Nice. And so? He is falling prone, uh, incapacitated, and can't stand up, stand up for the duration, which is a minute. Okay. And yeah. So he, like, collapses to the floor you hear like flesh like spreading out um and he is laughing at an invisible joke uh i believe he gets a save every round correct yes it's, it's just another broken wisdom. by damage uh it's concentration so as long as i'm concentrating so you guys good. kick in the door and then hemp is he fires off just some magic and is holding the big guy down anything else mm -hmm. um i think that'll be it okay get him guys behind you it's just uh, a bunch of little hands tickling oh, no, actually it's his turn let's see hmm he, what did he do with strangers? I think he probably would do that. He turns to Shark and he, can you give me a wisdom saving throw? Counter spell. No, wait. I'm trying to decide. He is going to cast a spell. Yeah, I'm trying to decide if it's worth it though. Cause he could be like, I'm gonna cast a little spell at Shark and the next turn be like, Here's the biggest fireball you ever dang I'll give saw. you some narrative flavor and you can decide from there. You okay. guys, intruders, kick open his door. He did hear you because you smashed the floorboards, but he's in the middle of doing some kind of ritual. When you guys open the door and he sees the gang of you, he looks at Shark and says, you work for me now, and starts to cast Yeah, I'm going to counterspell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, Thank you. What happens if, let's say, it's a level two spell, hemp? It just counters it, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't even so, have to do anything. Describe yeah. it. Uh, so I'm still there concentrating, getting my little fingers on the big guy, tickling him real good, getting every part of his little body, every little crevasse. And he's down there, he's giggling so hard. And then I see him like raise his hand and he does his little, you work for me now. And I go, no, <laughs> I, that's all I do. You just snap and say, no. I say, stop that, stop that. <laughs> That's my friend. Okay, um, you, he draws on this powerful, you know, attempt to charm or persuade Shark or something. Uh, and you, you silence his spell and you deny his permission to the arcade in this moment. I say cringe. Cringe. Uh, that's the, the vocal word that you have to speak is cringe. When he casts the spell, like you can see power emanating from the ground and it kind of pulses in a wave. It's starting to like build up in this place that's like his magical sanctum and something will happen, but we've not quite gotten there yet. Mm. Um, for now, though, it's Foray, his new monk powers of flowing. What do we do? Ooh, okay. How many stunning fists am I going to get? My heart and my actions are utterly unclouded. In this moment, I know what I must do. Get him. I run over, and I just fucking... He's so brave. So, <laughs> so brave. With his giant bodyguard fucking giggling on the ground, what do you do? Uh, 
Actually, if I move the, no, I can only hit the bodyguard right now, right? Because the bodyguard's down, not him. The bodyguard is laying down incapacitated by the spell, but you could get to the guy and punch him now. I just forgot how far I moved. That's okay. You have monk speed now, right? Well, I mean, yeah, I moved 40 feet. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'm just going to hit the, uh, the guy laying down three times. Okay. Yeah, sounds great. And remind me, Tasha's is incapacitated? Yes. Cool. So you just get to crit him three times. Yep. I punch him. I'm just like, how my heart resonates. <laughs> uh, seven. Yeah. Wait, damage? No, seven. Brother, he's oh, yeah, yeah, you crit. Oh, oh, just instantly. He's fully incapacitated. It resonates with heat and life. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of... Um, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, okay. You get advantage, though. He's on the ground. I get, a, I get advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Dutchess. that's cocked. Okay. I'm just going to... Okay, uh, 17. Mm-hmm. Good. Uh, 14. Not good. Hmm. Uh, 17. 17 cool. hits. All right, so two. Two hits, and then... Oh, that doesn't get rolled. Okay, sorry. Hold on. That should be a reroll. Uh, and then that will be... 11. 11 points of damage? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, you just, this big blob of dead and corpses, you're just like thundering punches into it. And you guys hear, like Rocky punching the meat? But sounds? Every, every time I'm punching, I'm taking a deep breath in and exhaling with each punch. Okay, sure. Very, very key. Anything, you said key, fast. I'm just yeah. waiting. Was there anything else I needed to do? Yeah, uh, we're gonna just go ahead and add uh, one of those is a stunning strike. Okay. Of course. Yeah, of course. So remind me DC again. DC 15, you fail, he's stunned until my next turn. I always roll Oopsie so daisy. fucking low on these. Oopsie daisy. All right, cool. Stunned. Well, he's got. He's so virile and furt. I feel like now. a plus five to this. <laughs> so that gives my roll like a nine. So yeah. Okay, now he's incapacitated and stunned. How my heart, it resonates. All right. <laughs> And then I hold a JoJo's pose. Okay. <laughs> We've entered a new era of monk. Are you done? Yes. Okay. Uh, it is its turn. Uh, I think right now all it can do is save against Tasha's, right? Yep, 16. All right, well, with five on the dice, there's no shot. <laughs> you just Poor like, guy. seven, you're up. Um, asking the table. I could cast Moonbeam behind us to kind of cut off whatever the fuck those are. That could be Paul. So they can't Ooh, get Ooh, like a zoning spell, too. That sounds pretty smart. That's okay. a great idea. Then that's what I'll do. I'll it's cast, like Molly. I'll cast Moonbeam <laughs> behind us. Okay, what's your plan? To catch both of them? or Just like, to like, I'm going to... Uh, he's mollying banana. Circle tool. I'm just going to put it like right there. Just so that they can't mm. get to us. Or they take damage if they step in it. Mm, interesting. Okay. Um, and that'll be my action, and then as my bonus action, oh. right, I can do that? I'm going to turn into a bear. I think I can do that. Can, I think so. I think it's a bonus Wild action. shape bonus action? Yeah, I think yep. you can just do that. Oh, yep. wait, can he concentrate? Yeah. All right. Damn, you're, right. Just, you're just cool. Stop the Tech 9 rush, dude. Uh, what kind of bear? Brown bear. Mm, fair enough. All right, uh, I think those are... I assume you have the stats. Those are medium or large? Probably large. They large. are. Large. Okay. Yeah. Do you have to roll health for them or are you just like. No, they, you just take the stat block basically. Gotcha. Okay, so you. Can you guys like put yourselves in grid squares here? Or actually, are you, are you planning to run in? Um, I did my action and my bonus action, so I don't think I can do anything. Still the move. Oh, that's true. Uh, the reason I'm asking is because a bear is a large creature. So you're actually that big. Oh, cool. Uh, which is going to be a problem in this particular part of the... Yeah. Um, in that case, yeah, I'll move up into this hallway. All right. What do you say as a bear? <laughs> okay. Really good Believable. Bear. All right. Really Wait, is a trumpet bear, though? Oh, so I have, like, a little toupee. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, uh. <laughs> I okay. get the best picnic baskets. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, good turn, good turn. Uh, it'll be Stewie's turn. Um, can I do stuff past the bear? Like, I also somehow lost my like measuring, so I have no idea how far I can move. What's your plan? You want to shoot past I him? I want to use bold person on the yes, sun. Yes, that you can do, uh, but you'll have to like kind of go in the rim a little bit more just to get past the wall. Okay, so okay. yeah, I'll move up. Like scooch over. 
You basically, here. functionally in combat, you hold those squares, but she can see, whole person is fine, because it's not even an attack. She just needs to be able to see them, so okay. she just can kind of go behind you, use you as a giant bear shield, and cast whole person. Yeah. Okay. So it's a wisdom saving throw. All right, old wisdom saving throw, that's fine. I mean, it's pretty good at those, so this one might actually stick. Uh, let's see, for once, can I roll a good roll? Did he do it? Did he do it? Hold on, too many things. I have many windows open, and I don't remember which one is which. Mm, one second. Ah, yes, okay. He got a 16. That's what it is, a 16. So he saves. Damn it. He uh, kind of gives you, he's like glowing with this arcane power, uh, and he kind of gives you like a, just a stern look, like why even challenge? Um, I end my turn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, fair enough. Uh, we will go to the creatures behind in the moonbeam. So, both of them have like horribly constructed tails made just exclusively of like vertebrae, um, and they're very long. And what they're going to try to do is whip out um, and grab two people in the back. They're both going to have to actually like they're kind of like slithering along the surface, like along some kind of like pipes or like molding in the ceiling, and they're going to try to. Whoosh, and both grab Shark and Valar, uh, which means they have to go through your Moonbeam. So what happens? That will be... It will take, they have to make a, t a constitution saving throw. Mm -hmm. um, and on a failed one, you take 2d10. Yeah, they fail. Okay. I think that's a 10, right? Yeah. Just then they have to walk through the conduct dice. another. The air fryer. Okay. I'm using new dice. Uh, yeah, I'll use roll two. That's... Six damage. Okay. But it's radiant? Yes. Okay. I mean, there you guys see this like pale light kind of as they whoosh, flick their tails in. It's like immediately burning. Um, and they don't stop, but it's clear that it's like searing through bone. Um, I need uh, strength saving throws from Valar and Shark, which could not have picked two worse targets, I think. 16. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. The one for you is a 20, and the one for you is a 5. So five's good. Oh, I do not beat a 20. No? No. Excellent. All I right, so... very poorly. Oh, wait. I don't. Sorry. <laughs> Are you sure? Yep, positive. Okay. He's a showman, though. Valar, this tail comes screaming at you. I think you just kind of deflect it, um, and you knock it aside. But Shark, it gets you around the neck, um, and it kind of pulls you 10 feet closer, which almost puts you in the moonbeam. <gasps> And next round it will, um, but you're kind of grappled there, fighting with this thing. It's got you by the neck. Cool. Um, those are done. It is your turn, Shark. And then Valar. All right. I'm going to just fucking Super Saiyan rage. <laughs> and then I'm going to grab the tail and mm -hmm. pull it into the oh. moonbeam. <laughs> All right. We'll do con uh, contested. We'll go with maybe athletics. Do I get advantage? Oh, yeah. yeah. You're angry, right? <sighs> oh, jeez. That's not as good as it could have been. It's a 17. Ah, uh, 17 beats a 14. Yes, it does! Oh, and sure. by the, what's the legal rule for this? Uh, for what, me being better? Yes. It's like nunk pro tunk or something like by that. By the law of nunk pro tunk, <laughs> you yank the creature from where it is 10 feet closer, pulling it into the moonbeam, which makes a constitution saving throw of, oh, wait, you might actually have this one. Um, yeah, 17. Uh, that, that probably saves, yeah. Okay, and then what happens? Um, it, well, it doesn't take the damage if it saves, right? Uh, you tell me with movie, Mike. It could be half. It could be half. Uh, oh, half as much. I rolled 11, so it'll take... Okay. It will take half, but also it doesn't like radiant damage, so it will take a little more than that. Um, and the same thing, you can see this creature's, like, bones beginning to even dissolve and its form not holding very well. Uh, Shark, anything else? Uh, does that count as an attack, like pulling him in? An action. Um, we'll say that uh, you've freed yourself from its grasp because you've like pulled it off and you're there. So you're you are you have used an action, yes. Okay, so I can't do a second attack. So I will take a few steps this way. <laughs> okay, um, we'll say like as part of this contest, do you want to do the like the tug of war over the shoulder? And you just like run for the other side of the room and you're dragging him. Hey, that's perfect. Cool. All right. Um, so Shark takes off and he's, he's pulling the creature in. Uh, Valar, you're up. How big of a threat do we think these little snaky guys are? They're kind of bitches so far. Okay. But they're just sitting there taunting us. 
and pulling us. That's fine. I can do that a okay. bit more. I'll run in to here. I guess I can't get by a bear. You can run past him as long as you can end in a square that's not his. He has graciously left several in front of him. Okay. Yeah, scoot in. Um, and I'm going to guiding bolts uh, solemn. Okay. Uh, I believe it's an attack roll. Come on, baby. Good luck. Uh, it's a 18. Ooh, 18 does it. Okay. All right, what happens? Uh, so he's going to take 4d6 radiant damage. Wow. 4, 5, 8, 14. Okay. Radiant damage nice. and the next uh, attack made against the target has advantage. Okay. Um, so you fire off. Previously you described this as like snaking yellow magic. Um, mm -hmm. And when it hits him, uh, like a, almost like a magnetic light appears around him. Anything else? Uh, oh, do you have the rapier, Hugh? Mm -hmm. Did you roll with advantage on your initiative? I did not. One of the advantages of the rapier. Will you uh, roll again? We'll retcon. Sorry, to continue, Valar, what are you saying? I rolled the exact same initiative. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> um, I think that's... <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to help you. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> I think that's it for me. Okay, it is your turn. All right. I'm just gonna run up to the guy and is he looking? What's he looking like? Is he looking weak? Is he looking strong? Not especially. Um, so he is on the ground. Foray is just bludgeoning him. Um, it's clear that the concussive strength of Foray's new punches are like disrupting his ability to fight as well as the Tasha spell that's happening. He seems fully and thoroughly like grounded for now um, and is like struggling to even get up or do anything. He won't be moving but he's looking. But he's looking healthy. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna crawl inside of him then since he's constrained. Okay, uh, I think he fails dex and strength. He's on stunned, that. right? So he can't even. He's incapacitated. You're, but he's you stunned. fully stunned him now. I don't think he can resist you, so you'll. Yep, I'm inside of him. All right, describe how you enter the many men. He's giggling so much from him tickling him, so I'm just crawling into his mouth. He's All about right. to pee. Down. He's yeah. about oh, to pee. traditional approach. It's been a while. Yeah. All right, uh, well, whoop, you're inside. Uh, anything else? I'll shout out to the team, focus on the solemn. Okay. I'll kill this guy. All right. The room has finished powering up. You see these, these arcane runes kind of on the side. Can I get an arcana check from anyone who would know arcane magic? So you two, for sure. So Hugh and what? Would my mask give me the opportunity to maybe figure this out? Sure. 14? Not that mm. it's that good. Figure, yeah. 19. Mm. Hugh, can I get an Arcana as well? Yep, here it comes. 18. Mm. There's something happening here. <laughs> Very nice. Definitely magic. Something <laughs> is afoot. I need a wisdom saving throw from Seven Bear. Seven Bear. Duh, so do I use the wisdom that's on... You use mine. Keep your brain stats. Okay, okay. That's a 16. Okay. Um, Hemp, now that it has happened, I think I'll give this to you because you uh, countered the previous version. The exact same spell kind of comes rebounding out of the wall and it is another sort of charm or mind affecting spell that gets kind of like thrown at the bear. You, your uh, bear toupee fully empowers you away from this kind of effect. You are fully committed to fighting as a bear. You do not have time for whatever this is. Um, but it appears that in this place, uh, evil magics in this, of this kind will rebound at the end of the round. Uh, that will be the bottom of the turn order. We'll go to hemp. I'm going to go ahead, while well, I'm still tickling this guy, and launch a big scorching ray at uh, Solemn. OK. All right, you're holding the tickle. And you, what do your scorching rays look like? I just pull out my little hand pistol and go boom, 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 at him. So Star, I just start blasting. You okay. advantage on this attack. Oh, I do? Yep. Got him. Solemn. Blast. Is it the you next attack? Solemn? Yeah. Scorching ray, I guess, the roll for each individual. So one. the first so one. The first one, yeah. Advantage. First one. Okay. Well, that's a 12 to hit. I imagine that doesn't. It does not. He's wearing, like, his robes are, like, inlaid with some, like, metal plates that, like, scrap metal, maybe, like, junk foraged armor, and it kind of hits one and... Glance off the side. Okay. Okay. This dog. This this 
Oh, and then a nat 20. Okay. Perfect. We'll take that. All so right. one of them hits. One of them crits, yeah. Then I need, uh, I think it's just, and do I re-roll damage for crits? Uh, you or is it just can double dice, dice, or you can roll the dice and then double it. I'm going to double dice. Okay. Uh, five. Okay, that's much better. Uh, 16 damage. Total? Yeah. Okay. So you fire off these scorching rays with your hand pistol. Um, the first one misses. Wildly missed. Wildly <laughs> misses. But the next one kind of hit him some, hits him square in the chest. Anything else? Uh, trying to think of if there's anything I can do with bonus action. Hmm. I'm going to remind myself that I have gnome cunning, which will give me advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. So if he tries to turn me, it seems good. I, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'll have advantage. Uh, that'll be it. I'll pass. Okay. Sounds good. He, um, you see him like frustrated that his first round of spells doesn't work. And he kind of like power building up from his foot all the way to like his face, like a, like a surge kind of like extremely empowers himself in an arcane thing, gets very big, draws in all the light. It gets dark and casts fear. Um, in everyone in the doorway needs to give me a wisdom saving throw. Uh, Shark, you're the only person who... And Hemp, you're both safe. You're a little too far. So those four. 22. Nice. Can Hugh get feared from in... <laughs> is Hugh safe in the body? <laughs> yeah, he was safe. Wait, okay. it's, a, it's a cone, so he's putting it in that direction. Gotcha. You're kind of off the side. Let's go. Save. Uh, what did you say was wisdom? Wisdom, yep. Uh, 20, unnatural 20. Okay, save. I rolled a nat 20, but... It landed in, like literally inside of my jaw harp, so I don't know if that counts. If it's not cocked, if we <laughs> listen, listen. If it lands in your instrument and you're playing a bard, <laughs> and I say this doesn't count, that would be the most horrible thing a dungeon master could do. That would be racist. That would be yeah, yeah. And Classic, so I say yeah. yeah, it's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, Using the ukulele in the deck, which is what she's doing with the draw harp. Anyway, so yeah. I think... 22. Yeah, I think everyone saves. Okay, so he, he, he like fires off this third level arcane fear, you guys. And you guys are like, man, we've seen some shit. That guy's a bear. He's got a toupee. We're here to kick some ass. You guys have just like, <laughs> nothing happens here. Uh, so a after that, you can again see that like the arcane power seeps out of him into the room. It's building up again. But at least for now, nothing happens. Foray, you're up. Wasn't somebody before me? Just him. It was hemp, and then him, and then four. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't skip anyone, right? I just remember going second. I thought you were hemp went before you. Hemp. And oh, the I understand. Okay, I thought I thought you said hemp at the bottom of the order. My, my apologies. Oh, excuse me. I might have done the hemp you thing that I. I'm sick. Old. No worries. Um, <clears throat> cosplaying four. A. I can oh. see it. This oh. hellish world we live in. Mm. As the arcane just seeps out of him, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna run over, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm gonna punch him three times. Yeah, no, I'm shocked. Yeah. Uh, that'll be a <laughs> 21. 21? Yeah. That'll be a 14. Why do you have advantage? Oh, I, I, was, I was thinking about the big guy. I mm -hmm, apologize. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, you want to just re read sure. all of the rules? Okay. Keep it fair. I apologize. Eight. Wow, fuck me. <laughs> Not 21. 21? Okay, yeah. Uh, Nat 20. Fuck me. Nice. <laughs> right. nice. Yeah, so the first punch. So I double the dice anyways, which means I basically get three hits. That's so funny. Pretty much. So you, you hit him hard like in the metal plate he's got in his room, yeah. and you hear like a clang, and then you realize, okay, we'll just go for the face. And then yeah. one, two. And then, yeah, I'm basically hamoning his face. Uh, he's getting stunned. Of course he's getting stunned. And yeah. I'm sure, let me, so yeah, what's that ahead. save? Yeah, it's a DC 15 uh, con. Thank you. Can you just move the map? I just want everyone to know how bad my dice rolls are, that I'm not faking this shit. I'm gonna take this dice and I'm gonna throw it. And it's gonna be a fucking three on the dice. And then I'm gonna say, told you. Oh, it's a three! <laughs> I use a second, I use a second stunning strike. Okay, so you go for the, the first one is a, the first one hits is a stunning strike. And then, you know, there's some miracle. Will you pass that to me? I, I just need to see if you're actually because I don't think that's I can do that after so you fail to say actually I think I can. I think that's part of the broken thing about Mom. Well, I, I can just be like whenever. Your key points, right? Yeah. So, so I go ahead, yeah. It's not a bonus action. It's no, it says no part uh, action timing or whatever. Aww. Yeah, get, get, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I assume gonna, an 11. Fails. 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 So okay. because I crit, I can just double that dice. Yep. Cool. Ooh, Don't geez. forget to roll damage for the second one as well. Yeah, okay. 
Yay, don't forget to roll damage on your second crit of the combat. Yikes, and like, okay. So <laughs> that'll be seven, and then, oh, not, this is not double Jesus, and then that's, it's okay, and 10 damage. 10 total? I rolled a one and a uh, three for the first crit. Okay, but you also had the second one that hit as well. Yeah, and I'm telling you, that was also not good. Great. Because I'm not, I'm not in natural form right now, so oh, I'm Got it, got it, got it. Okay. No All right, I mean, you know. Th- He's stunned, though, guys. Yay! Yeah, the, no, other, the other guy is now no longer stunned. Okay. And Done? I pass turn. It is, is, it is the giant corpses. It doesn't resolve. You tell me you've muddled my mixture. Muddled Party. the mixture, boy. I'm going to roll and see if the corpse can move. He, uh, I put a 12 on the dice, but he has a plus one, so he, no, he doesn't get to move. He's just, oh, ha, oh, oh. ha. Uh... I love that for me. Seven. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna move up and kind of I'm I'm ba- I'm like you know doing the bear walk through the hallway. I'm like knocking over <laughs> old rubble as I do it. I'm gonna walk up to this guy and I will uh, slash him with my claws and then I'm gonna bite him. Yeah, nice. seems about right. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So how do I how do I? It should even down below it should say like claw bite. Okay, you okay. can just roll those. Plus six to hit. That's uh, eleven. Eleven's not going to do it. All right. Let's say that you like grab his metal armor and you're like, Grr. I think he has loaded dice, but there's no way you fail every attack roll. That's physical. But he got a net twenty. Might. He did get that, but yeah. not for so a then. Deck. So then, can I go for the bite? Yep. Okay. That's also a plus six to hit. Good luck. That's a fifteen. Oh, 15's not enough. Damn. That is nuts, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, here's the thing. Now you're a threatening bear. Yep. I'm just going to get up on my hind legs and go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything That's else? It. Nope. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Um, I am going to use Vicious Mockery. Ooh, Nothing. okay. I'm going to say, your dad wishes I was his kid because I'm a better student. He gets a 21. 21. Oh, fuck. My <laughs> turn. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens on a fail? Or on a success? Oh, it was a success? He gets a 21. Unless your save is, he succeeds on the save is what I mean. Yeah. What happens? Uh... No, nothing? Yeah, nothing. Okay, why are you doing that to me? <laughs> because you challenged him at the one thing he doesn't care about most, and he says, I don't really care about I it. I think you care about it a lot. Well, clearly not. Well, you saw it. You saw it. Your dad, okay, I'm, I hide. <laughs> uh, Stewie retreats. She's, she's, she realizes this is not the correct line of attack. She's got to come up with a new dig that'll work. Um, do you want to do anything else? Um... I'm going to give Hugh Bardic inspiration. Okay, um, so you saw him kind of like <laughs> his way in. You're yeah. What's your inspiration in this moment? Get him in the guts, man. <laughs> <laughs> Blow his ass up. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, um, it is the bone serpent's turns. Um, oh fuck, I forgot about them. One of them is currently burning alive in the moonbeam that uh, Shark is holding him in. So he's gonna try and break out. We'll do contested, we'll say uh, athletics again, because why not? I rolled a one, so never yeah, I, mind. I win. <laughs> you, should I roll the damage? Roll the damage, damage yeah. Oh, I'll just roll that con save. I'm sure this will be high too. Uh, oh, 12 on the dice. 10 damage. What's the save? Uh, constitution. Yeah, what's the number though? Uh, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. I got a, oh, I got a 13, so probably not that. Uh, 14? Cool, all right. <laughs> so what's the damage, sorry. Uh, 10. 10, and they hate that damage. Uh, that one is looking not great. Uh, he's like, his bones are fracturing and chipping. Um, sharks got him like in the thing. The other one is, mm, they're not very smart. I think he's gonna try and grab hemp. I need a strength saving throw. Oh no. I got like a 12. You still might beat me. I got a seven. <laughs> oh! Third strong. All right. Uh, I think what it is is like, it's, this is it. So it, the moonbeam is there. It's clearly dangerous. They know it now. It's trying to finagle it in a way that it's not going to get hit, and it doesn't go very well. It's also I, I point the finger I shot Scorching Ray at <laughs> to my right. It's quaking in its bone boots. Uh, he does still go through it, so... Uh, 13 is not enough. We just did this. What's the damage? It's another five. Nine. All right, scrape Moonbeam uh, for you, not me. Um, all right. They had a terribly awesome turn. Shark, you're up. And that one's in the Moonbeam? Yep, you're you holding it there. He could not break out of your... Did triangle. you say the other one went through it too, though? Only for an attack. He's not, like, ah, stuck I in there. I see. Do you guys want me to take care of the ads or hit Solemn? I think just hitting Solemn, hit personally. Solemn. All right, well, I clipped my boots together. Mm-hmm. Um, you did say that. 
So, and I'm raging, mm -hmm. and I'm going to that. move my 80 feet. I'm going to jump over, like I'm going to kind of roll off the, your bare back and do like a little flip over Solemn to this side. Cool. Give me like a... Oh, sorry. Okay, if you want to go over him. Oh, no, you, you could have gone around with that much speed. Give me an athletic cell. Let's see how... How, how cool this yeah, looks. Yeah, yeah. Not that cool. Um, it's a 13. With your advantage? Yeah. Wow. You know what it is? It's just kind of dense in here. There's yeah, a lot of people. Not a lot you don't want to hurt anyone. So you, you want to do the full flip, but instead you kind of like disappear from eyesight behind the big bear and you're like, I did a flip, guys. <laughs> Canonically, every time I've given you a chance to do a cool backflip, you have failed every single yeah, every time. Yeah, every single time. And Maybe one day, brother. Now that I did this one, I'm in front of Solomon. I hit him in the face with my axe. <laughs> oh, I'm shocked. All right, that is a... Twenty-three. Twenty-three to hit. To hit. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Got him, big guy. Actually, wait, no, because great weapons master minus five. It's eighteen. Eighteen hits. Oh, thank God. That would have been really. We'll sad. say like and it, it barely hits. So we'll say that you like slam his like actual armor, but so hard it does damage. He's adding numbers. He's doing trigonometry. He does forty-five damage. <laughs> I it's just was. 31 there. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on yeah. The first mm -hmm, attack. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 31, yeah, on the first attack, just putting the... When I swing the second time, am I allowed to choose not to do Great Weapons Master this time? Mm, I'm not that familiar with it. Okay, he yeah, says okay. yes. All right. Oh, shit. All right, 15 plus the 7, we're looking at 22. 22 hits. Cool. Hmm. Is it cool? Actually, good it's call, because awesome. 17 would not have hit. Yeah. Is it cool? Are we having fun? 21 damage. God damn it. <laughs> this is my personal hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, gosh, he's like... He's very powerful as this undead arcane force in his lair with all these like arcane roots powering him up with the might of several powerful undead spells keeping him moving. And one fucking bugbear just shows up and does like 60 damage to him in like four seconds. Uh, his armor is like shattered, his robes are torn, his light is going out. What? I'm sorry, but if he already had advantage from stunning strike, does that just mean his all of his attacks would hit no matter what? Is it double advantage? Uh, is it stack? No, but if he's stunned, don't think he'd get, he hit. I, I'm just asking for future. Yeah, yeah that's, that's uh, pretty wild. Yeah, that's. I remember how much I. It's been a while since Caleb played a monk in my games, like a real one, and all of the trauma is just getting unpacked here live on camera. We're so finally on hey, level you. playing field. Thank you so. Yeah, level playing fields. I needed the. All right, I'm gonna stop pontificating. We can. I can figure out how to kill you later. Um. All right. I think that went. What did I say out loud? Um. Shark, are you done? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. The water. How's he looking? I think you were kind of going in that direction. And then he rough. Didn't rough, okay. I'm going to move down here and be like, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, pardon me. <laughs> okay. Move over here. Excuse me. Um, and then do I get some sort of attack advantage with him being stunned? Yes. Okay, I'm going to swing at him with my sword. Yeah, it seems good. Is it just advantage? Yeah. That one's cocked. You got it. Uh, that one's just going to do it so I won't roll twice. That's an unnatural 20. Okay, well, an unnatural 20 hits. Um, the Yeah, so let me get it. Um, okay. That's six, but I'm going to Divine Smite. Oh, okay. Uh, which is <laughs> another 3d8. Does it resolve? That's six, 3d8. Go ahead, yeah, come on. Okay, so that's six, as well six, just, I'll just go ahead and... Plus seven and your response, yeah, I have a, I'm out of mana. I have no cards. Five, 18, I don't know how many lands this turn. 20, I gotta 30. go home. I'm making uh, my mom. Plus the d4 for the other... Yep, 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 the of course, damage. plus the d4. Uh, the just, just adding the d4. Oh, wait, that's right. You're just a d4. One d4. It's a one. It's a one. So 24 total. Oh, 24 total. How much of that was radiant? Uh... For, uh, one everything but six, right? Oh, wait, no, the Divine Smite. Uh, everything yeah. but the first six, yeah. So is 18 Radiant? Yeah. 18 Radiant. 
Does he this pull is a up? fun boss fight, guys. 27. <laughs> you guys are fucking badass. Uh, 20. Okay, one plus one. Okay. Oh, so close. Uh, okay, you, I'm, I'm going to attack him again. I figured you were going <laughs> to. You, you get this, like, powerful smite that comes, like, slamming down off your sword. Um, and it's like, there's an explosion of, like, arcane energy. Like, clearly his runes of protection are being disrupted. The, like, floor below you with this, like, grand ritual that he's, like, presiding over, like, actually, like, flickers for a moment, like, the power going out. And you come in for the killing blow. Okay, that's definitely yeah, going to hit him. That's a 26 to 26 hit. 26 will hit, yeah. Um, so then I'm gonna. I roll love that. Like he's like, oh, damage. I'm still alive. As he winds up another <laughs> like, flail smash. And then I roll again. <laughs> I'm, I'm still uh, here. Okay, still so okay. It's another initial seven damage with one radiant. Mm hmm. Is he dead now? Maybe. Because if not, I'm gonna divine smite. Right? Radiant's uh, double. So, eight oh. damage is enough to kill him. What does it look like? Um, well, since he's like really hurt, I think I'll just kind of like, I think he's, he was really close to it and I'm just going to kind of walk up to him and just like hit him with the butt of my sword in his face and he's going to fall down. <laughs> okay. Uh, you hit him with that crazy powerful smite. You like shatter his guard. You like, you take off an arm, which he was like trying to defend himself with and you just come up and you finish him off with the butt of your sword. Um, that is the end of him. Uh, the two serpents in the back drop off, but the creature that you're inside is still animated on his own. Which is cool because it's literally your turn right now. <laughs> All right, I'll try and kill him in one shot. It's All right. athletics contested by your physical saving. <laughs> <laughs> you look at me like I had anything to do with that. Oh, that wow, is that a one? Five. Five. Oh. All right, you got this. Oh, yeah, no, I beat that. It wasn't good though. It was an eleven. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> All right, what happens? I'm inside of him and I just get real big and I go. Bah. All right. Uh, there's a wah moment as everyone in the chamber is just covered in guts. Like, you guys are just like, poof, he explodes the expansion, throwing body parts around you. Uh, it is eminently dark in this room, and there is no motion or sign of life as you guys have defeated the bad kid of the family. Nice job. I'm going to cast light so we can see now. Yay. Hey, do you guys ever just get oh. the feeling... Sorry, not to interrupt. The room was powering up again to reverberate his fear spell, and it like as soon as he dies, it goes and just stops. You guys ever get the feeling that we're just stronger than this place? Valar turned that guy to soot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then Hugh turned that guy to paste. He does that a lot, though. He does. That's a very normal day. So proud to be with you people. Some of the strongest people I've ever seen. You think the so pages powerful. are covered in guts now? Oh, did you just oh, punch that homework. guy three times? My homework! <laughs> did, did I just only punch him three times? Maybe. Maybe. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to start looking for those little notes we need. Okay, give me an investigation. Hemp is kind of looking for magic. What? 23. Okay, perfect. He's looking for magic clues. What are you guys doing in this moment? I'll start looking for magic looking stuff. Basking in the glory of another victorious divine smite. Okay, two searches? What do you got? I got a nat 20 on the search. Let's Ooh. go. I don't know what my bonus is, so probably not high. So It's a one. So You guys set off for business right away. The rest of the group is basking in the wind? Is that what it is? I'm going to use my keen smell in bear mode to just sniff or something. Okay. I'm just sniffing around. I think I'll follow like them around with the light so they can see what they're doing. Okay, so you're helping them, you've got light. Give me a, you're gonna have a perception just to see if you smell anything interesting. Is anybody oh, else slightly seven. attracted oh, I have advantage. to seven right oh, thank now? God. Uh, with my perception, it would be 25. Okay, um, the thing about this is perception based on smell here is horrible because you're in an undead room full of body parts and dead exploding guts. Uh, do you find interesting things? Sure, but it's like actual organs, um, as you trying to sniff for clues isn't quite practical. Um, Stewie, are you joining them in their victory cheer? Yeah. Okay. So you guys have this wonderful triumphant moment. You guys have, I guess, looked for arcane clues before. I mean, this is kind of your deal, right? Hitman, but also arcane trickster, you have a knack for knowing what's at least arcane important. You, Hemp, find what the, like the remainder of the notes have kind of been poured into. There's a, like a journal um, of Sullen that has like, not only like the original formulas, but like his versions. Um, you can spend some time kind of familiarizing yourself with them um, to kind of learn. It's like all contained in one book. 
While he's busy, you actually find a series of scrolls that were stolen from the professor's office, just regular arcane scrolls. Mm. All right, I got them. Three, to be exact. Here you go, Hemp. I got three scrolls. Yippee! Yippee! I can learn these and use them as regular spells and not have to have them as one-time use scrolls. No, That's what? for the audience. <laughs> True. Right. Sleeve. Wait, I'm still transcribing. Let's leave. <laughs> now let's leave. Okay, we're done. <laughs> I have this all sounds like a short rest. Here. Yeah. Okay. Is Solemnly still around? Uh, his corpse is there, but he's like ash. Okay, so I don't see his ghost or anything. <laughs> oh, good question. No, actually, he doesn't have a ghost. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, the way that he was defeated, permanently defeated him. Ooh. It's almost like he had a resurrection mechanic that smites destroy. Thank you. <laughs> 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 wow, wow, you wow. That's anyway. right, you were so upset about uh, yeah. that. Anyway, nice. <laughs> uh, man, I love Paladin. Yeah, true. Okay, so you spend an hour, you guys are short resting here, uh, just kind of getting your bearings. Make sure there's nothing missing. The three spells um, you learn are Remove Curse, Arcane Lock, okay. and Private Sanctum. Um, which is called Mordecai's private sanctum, which is like the little house you have, but also people can't peep in. Although that's a level four spell. Oh. And then what was the other one? Private sanctum, remove curse. Arcane lock. Arcane lock. That's the one for the bomb. Ah. Mm, perhaps. Perhaps. Either way, you guys stepped foot on the surface, um, and it has gotten way, way darker. The place to the south of you is like spewing out black clouds of like raw, like necromantic magic, where it's like even thick and raining on the battlefield of just disgusting energy. Um, almost like something, some kind of evil has been bottled there that was released once you guys shattered this ritual. Um, those like low, like storm clouds are kind of just rolling over the landscape as you guys kind of come out the basement. That's crazy. That way south looks spooky. The bomb is to our west. We can make it. Yeah, we can disarm the bomb, or lock the bomb. You said that he, it's almost like he had a re resurrection mechanic that's now gone. And the bomb does come back. Was he was reset in the time loop? The bomb comes back? Or No, the bomb's about to go off, sorry. And oh, so we still got two days. Well, the necromancer come back is what he's asking. Oh, okay. If we stop the bomb, and this evil energy is actually very bad, we no longer reset the loop. We're just screwed. That's what it's like to be a hero. Well, aren't we supposed to stop a loop and create a god? Yeah. So well, what I'm saying is we could go down to the... By the way, in the mountain. you guys remember how the cards work, right? Mm -hmm. They are still written, both of them. Stop the loop, create a god. Oh. Yeah, so we're still time looping. Do we want to go bomb? So Pharaoh is not a god. Well, we haven't, made, we him haven't made him a god yet. Oh, okay. He is here, actually. I think he can talk limitedly. Um, and he says, well done. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. What do you think Good we job. should do? Should we go stop the bomb, or should we go see what's up with Divinity down there? I'm not in charge, but I am excited to take on my new role. Yeah, I think stopping the Let's bomb. Let's go stop the bomb. Okay. Okay. So, uh, we're here, I think I said day of three, um, which would put you at travel four, travel five. You would get to the bomb on the last day, assuming you didn't want to go overnight and just get the exhaustion. We'd still have to fight the goo, right? Yeah, we're going to have to fight. Well, it depends on how this Yeah, I was going to say if I could... We well, we, d we don't know that he's associated with the ward. Like, if we destroy the ward... We know, like, I think Well, you can't... I think magic. you yeah. casting it is going to summon him regardless. Yeah. So I think we are going to have to fight him. So I think probably being rested We should up rest. Is, yeah. Um, rest, get there in day I, five. Does Arcana check use magic, or can I do it and just know? That is just your knowledge of the arcane. Gotcha. Assuming you don't do anything like detect magic along with it. Okay. If I'm still wild shaped, mm -hmm. is that magic? Uh, possibly, but that only lasts an hour. Okay, okay. Do you guys want to say we rested so it's... Yeah, and okay. get there day of five. You... Someone roll me an intelligence check. Not me. That's not great. That is... 17? That's enough. Oh, cool. On night of two, 
you guys had a like scout that was following you that Hugh had been killing every time at the gorge. Uh, it was something that we had not covered on this arc, so I'd like to cover it now to see if you guys were able to find them in a new place. Uh, you guys know they're coming. I will say anyone could have been on Watch of the Time. Could I get a perception check for this? Just to see if you guys were able to deal with them before all they were able to... Yeah, whoever would have been on Watch. I assume... Because no, you all know this. No, it's not a asleep. trick. I'm not trying to get past you. What? I would have been asleep. Okay. I got a 13. <laughs> okay. No. You were up at the time, yeah, so you, you should have been too. You were the one kind of keeping an eye out for him. Uh, it's perception, right? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. 13. Okay. Definitely you saw him. So at least one person was able to see him. I assume you would assassinate him with a little help? Yeah. Give me like a stealth check. We'll just do a contest. If you beat him, you get him again. Oh, okay. Forgot that I'm rolling the dice today. 22. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so on night of two, uh, you know, it's the same thing. It's a different place. He's obviously following you. You guys set a trap. You have a nice little camp out and then you get him with a um, So now in this way, the rates are not coming to your exact location on day of five and ruin your good time. Um, anyway, please resume your plotting and destroying of my arc. <laughs> so we're at the bomb. So we're at the bomb. So we're at the bomb. Okay. So now that I have knowledge of now that because you've been traveling for two days, I assume you've been reading. Mm -hmm. Give me an Arcana with advantage because you went to his sanctum, killed him personally, and has spoken to his father about these notes. Uh, another twenty-three. Okay. This is a very very unique thing in that it can be placed stationary, but if two kinds of these spells exist in like a pretty close area, like. 100, 200, 300 miles, something like that, they will cancel out. You, as you guys are stepping into the next square, realize that you have already disabled the one that was ongoing in the basement. There is currently no wards on the bomb. Mm. There's no wards on the bomb. Can you mm. put new ones on it? You think you can, yeah. but actually, you can hold on to the spell for like an hour, but not much longer than that. I can do it for like an hour. Can I? The, the wards would be more permanent when you cast them. I more mean like if you wanted to and you could figure out a way to travel quickly, you could cast it outside, hold the magic, and slap it on. How it might that? work, it might not. I'm not trying to give away too much with that. We don't have enough, we don't have a lot of time, so we gotta decide. Yes. Mm -hmm. I say you put them on there. Okay, well, I mean, there's no wards. We can touch the bomb. Is there any? I was I knew one that I touched it last time we exploded. You never, you touched, never touched the, the actual bomb. bomb. It was the ward. You touched I mean, the wards. I could have swore I have tried to fly, we tried to fly, fly it, it up and move it or something like yeah, that. Yeah, because we did the act. We did do something. Well, that's when it was right. still ticking. The wards the are gone The guy was now. gone with the bomb. Yes. It blown up. So the wards are gone. You are about a day's travel. What I more mean is that if you don't travel overnight and quickly, it will blow up because you've disabled the wards already. I say we go and try it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Travel to the bomb. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we roll the dice, literally. Oh, I thought we were already at the bomb. Yeah, this is... So, on the way, I'm informing him of a realization he has, which is that... That we have to have to, like... Quickly, because you guys already canceled the wards by going down there. I yeah. see. So, you get to the bomb. Can I speed, like... In theory, if I find Steed, would that speed us up enough to disable, to get rid of that time difference? More than fine, but the cost is going to be the exhaustion by traveling longer than you should. Um, so what this will mean is disadvantage on skill checks, which would be an arcana, but granted, I'll give you advantage. It will just be a straight up and down roll. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. I don't think the Steed's necessary. It would flavorly help, but also it is magic. Revere's ride. So, so if I don't do it, it's still just the same roll? Then I'm just not going to waste the spell slot. Okay. You guys get into the anti-magic zone, you know where the bomb is, same thing, you know of this, this creature that leaks out of the bottom when magic is cast, but the bomb is here and you hear like, not just ticking, the bomb is like visibly shaking. Okay. Well, this this is, is a skill check if I've ever heard of one. Mm -hmm. Well, he can't, he can't use magic right now, he'll die. Yeah, remember guy's still here. Well, we just, have, we just fight it. Yeah, you have to cast oh, it Oh, true, we have to starts. cast magic. Yeah, if he doesn't up. do this, the bomb just explodes. Do um, you have to throw him, otherwise he's just going to die on the spot? Oh, if you make your save, I guess. Something I wanted to well, no, there's no wards on anymore. when it came to the spell, still, maybe I learned it while we were going. Magic. Is that what kept the, the time no, loop? Does the creature come from the wards? or come from It's not something you know. Okay. It comes from the bomb, underneath the bomb. All right, hop on him. I'm yeah. throwing you over. All righty. This is what you were born to do. This is one of the most challenging spells you've ever cast. Yep. I will need an arcana roll. And here's the stakes. Part of this is, is that magic or no? It's coming, for sure, for sure. Definitely we'll do this. Because we're going to give everyone a chance they see it's coming. 
If you can beat a 25, they will be perfect wards, and the, the creature will be fully sealed inside of them along with the bomb. Oh. If you do not, it will come out and try to kill you immediately. So you said Arcana check first? Mm-hmm. I'll roll that privately. Well, hold on, oh. because people want to help you. People want to okay. help you. Yeah, this, is, this is the spell. You are, this will be the dice. Oh, okay. So you guys know this. You're coming up. You're here. Everyone can give the aid they want. Bardic Inspiration is fine, because it's not exactly a magic spell. What does Arcana fall under with intelligence? Yes. I, I have a plus. I help. You help. I have a plus eight to that. Okay. He's unfortunately suffering from exhaustion. Does he already have advantage? He will have it in this case, yes. Okay. But I it's cut that. by the disadvantage, so it'll be a straight up and down roll. But Unless if I but if I gave him advantage again. If you let's say cast a spell to give him advantage, that's you would probably die. Because the thing is gonna yeah. That's yeah. yes. Oh yeah, same with Bardic Inspiration. That's a question on I feel like it's because it's not exactly it's magic, it's words, just morale. Right? Drew, yeah. what do you feel about that? Yeah. yeah, it's not, I don't think it specifically says it's magic. It's doesn't, different. Doesn't help give them advantage, wouldn't that neutral if it out? You would give him two advantages now, which never works. Advantage, right. And then he also, it's oh, just okay. any number of disadvantages. You say he was disadvantaged because he's exhausted. But he has advantage because he's been studying this. Understood, yeah, understood, yeah. understood. Okay, I think it's just Bardic Inspiration, which is a D8. D8. Want to roll a D8 first? Do you want me to roll it for you, or do you want to roll it? I'll roll a D8. Good luck. Yeah. Seven. Okay. okay. That's yeah, that's What's good. your arcana bonus? Is, double check it's seven. If you can see it in the monitor. It is seven. Whoa. What's your arcana bonus? Plus eight. Gosh. So we're at 15. So Gotta be a 10. Or a 10. Higher. So it's a serious. 10.6 is average. 10.6 is average. No! 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 Close. Damn. Close. 22, though. Does it, do you guys want to throw a guidance? Maybe in a last second. Guidance yeah, would be, be a spell. Yeah, but then we just fight him. Uh. Yeah, either way. So this is the thrower over maneuver, right? Mm -hmm. Now I need a dexterity saving throw from you for the insta kill snatch out of the air. Uh, that's like a 13. Nope, I'm great. So he goes flying over, he casts the big spell, and then it goes <laughs> and just fucking snatches him out of the air and just rips him to shreds. Doesn't he have an advantage because that's what the throw is for? Yeah, but did, did you roll with advantage on the deck save? It's, oh, not on the deck save, no. You guys did this move oh, where right, he throws. Right, 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 yes, right, right, thank right, you, right, thank right. you. But you have disadvantage because you're exhausted, so it's just neutrals. Skill checks. Skill checks is not saves. Oh. Those are terrible. A three and a two. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm so, done. So, what happened is you go flying over, utterly torn to shreds. And then you guys reappear in the bar. The bartender's not there. You appear on the lander. Whoa, oh my god. You wanna... I assume you run the whole loop the exact same way. Do we have to kill him Wait, again? Wait, no, but we already have the information for the lock. We can go straight to the bomb, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, he has the runes. That's... Uh, the circle that's holding up to you. This is a choice. I'm saying you could, or you could go straight there and try it. Just run it the same way. It literally yeah, exact yeah, same. Yeah, so yeah, skill check way. again. <laughs> All right, skill check again. Good luck. Bardic inspiration. Bardic inspiration. Yeah. Can counter? I see my dice? Can we get a counter up? Skill check <laughs> number two. Three, I think. That's a six. Oh, six. Okay. Wait, okay. nope. Oh. I was wrong. That's a three. That's what All I thought. right. Oh, no, it's a harder was, roll now. Bonus was a what? Plus eight, so 11. I need a 14 or higher. Look. Oh! oh. That's not in the tray. Please try to hit the right, yeah, bottom yeah, of the thing first. No. No! We run it back. All right, he gets utterly torn to shreds. Wait, deck saving throw. Oh, so true, so true. <laughs> Your advantage. 17. 17's not enough. Okay. Did you roll advantage? Yes, I had an 11 and a 15. I have right, plus oh. two. All right, you're, now you're torn Yay. to shreds. Loop number two. This I'm is fun. anxiety. Roll number three. Let's go. What's that, Matt? I think a one. Woohoo! Or no. seven? That's a one. Oh no. Well, you double sure check it because it can. Oh no. Yahoo. Right. Ah, finally! There we go. Okay. Matt, First try. It's not try. even exciting on the third loop. <laughs> I could just picture you guys traveling like on a random day, like when he's reading the notes and you get there and you're like, surely this is the fucking one. And then he dies and then you're like, surely this is the fucking one. You, this is some of the most powerful magics that you know. Um, and you fire off this kind of like grand seal on the bomb. Yay. And it like fully encases in like actually crystallized arcane energy. Um, when you like do these like tightening runes of protection on the thing, you see like the spell monster kind of seeping out of the bottom and then just like gets stuck in the energy as well. Um, and here you are on the, what you hasten to be the fourth day. So you do have exhaustion, but you're here at the bomb and it stopped. Hey, we did it, guys. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, we it go to the Can we check and the card? And it stopped it's still there. Oh. Well, it stopped yeah, we forever. 
The bomb is never going to explode again. Oh, surely. Yeah, until we never, die. So never we again. Do it again. Unless somebody knows how to unseal wards. I'm like shaking the paper like maybe it's <laughs> delayed or something. Pharaoh right. says, yeah, I don't know. That's strange. Is it locked semi-permanent? Like, like, is it going to explode on day five? It's so, it, I would say it almost even looks like resin, but like charged in an arcane form. Like, are you going to examine it in any way, shape, or form? Yeah, I want to see if I can tell how long this bad boy is going to last. Okay, give me an arcane check. Uh, 16. Okay, this is not familiar magics to you, but like you go up and you inspect it, and it's very solid. Mm. Um, you do not foresee a way, at least immediately, for even like less powerful magics to mess with this in any way, shape, or form. How long is immediately? Like, you don't see a way right now that you could do it, period. Okay. At all. I think we're going to be safe. I think safe. we just got to go find what's yeah. making yep. the loop happen. Yep. Okay. Uh, given that it is day of four, as you guys are, like, disabling this bomb, um, give me perception checks. Wow, oh, that's, like, oh, actually wow. super good timing. 21. I'm not saying it funny. 21. 21 does it. 8. Does 16. Not. 6. Good? Nope. 18. Wait, you said perception. I'm so dumb. It's 13. I literally still does it. Okay, cool. So the 21 and the, you say 13? 16. 16 does it. And then 18. And 18 does it. Coming over the like northwestern horizon is the entirety of the Lifebringers marching in full battalion onto the enemy stronghold. Um, and they, like in the distance, because you guys didn't divert them this time, they have solved the poison problem and there's no enemies at the bridge basically. You've stopped the bomb, there's no more spell waste monster. They walk through this territory and arrive at you guys. Um, kind of Jason at the head, looking a little surprised to see you here. I'm sorry, hello? Oh, uh, sorry, sir. I don't, he grabs it and it, you don't have a pulse. You don't have to remind me. Sorry, I didn't realize it was a sensitive issue. What are you guys doing here? Saving your asses. Mm -hmm. Exactly what do you mean by that? Uh, exactly what I said by that. <laughs> You got me there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's that bard sass. That's awesome. We stabbed this puppy and I'm going to slap the bomb. <laughs> All right. You slap the bomb. Nothing happens. And he says, wow, I haven't seen a spell waster in... Oh, yeah, that would have been really bad. What is that? It has Do you understand the head. gravity of the situation? <laughs> yes, I don't quite understand this block of ice that you've frozen it into, but... Thanks for that, if you did that. We would probably all be dead. You know, Soul Command did say they tried to launch a preemptive fast strike against the growing undead threat here, but that it was not successful. I assume that there were some kind of protection magics that stopped the bomb from landing. Did you say ice? This guy knows fucking nothing. <laughs> yes, I don't even sir. know if I want to take you there. Points to the Black Mountain billowing smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've got this army, and then you hear like a rallying cheer. And we were thinking we would go, and he turns around, smash some skulls! And like everyone's like cheering. You mean we got this army? Oh, don't do this to me. Not in this moment. <laughs> We've been traveling for days. It's okay, because you've been promoted, brother. What? Yeah. <laughs> so let's take them onto the stronghold. Yeah, let's what get in there. Hear me out. Sure. What? what if they carry us so we can long rest while we're in motion? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got any. Tents that you can carry. <laughs> he says, well, carts. Ooh, carts. I got it. No carts. The terrain has been too tough for that. But, and we're about to go in the mountains. It's not good. We are going to camp here and we're going to make our final assault in the morning. I got word from Soul Command that some exercisers were making a first breach. We should see their actions tonight on the fourth day of the theater. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll see that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Soul Command said to wait here for further instructions from those people. So now that it's kind of Middle of the day or so, I'm winding down. I'm going to give my troops a quick eight, and then we'll probably maybe take our first movement around midnight. Um, so if you guys want to rest up and join us, cool. Also, you are literally my boss. So what are we doing? 
I'm cool with that. We, yeah, I'm cool with that. We could put a big tarp down, and I put the tiny hut on top of the big tarp, <laughs> and they carry the tarp. And so they're it's like, sleeping. Yeah, they're also going to sleep. Though. Yeah, but we could just tell them not to. That is true. Yeah. I will that say that like tired really soldiers really usually die. Yeah. <laughs> Let's <laughs> camp. Sleep. Let's sleep. <laughs> so good. this is not quite like the beach party. This is a very serious battlefield camp where there's no open flames. There's no lights. Everyone's being quiet. They have like MRE packs. People are in like making like bunker housing, right? They're digging out actually on this like hard field with real pickaxes to your point earlier. Um, and they're getting ready to hunker down for a bit and kind of hang out. Um, it is a quiet and nervous mood. Um, what do you guys do here on kind of the last camp before the stretch? I get a pickaxe. Mm -hmm. I search around, mm -hmm. stay vigilant. I'm basically like, uh, <clears throat> like someone on lookout, but also kind of like... Careful, you've got your mic on your... Oh, power, power napping. Okay, sure. You're, you're resting, but also, you know, you're on edge. This is yeah. time for the last fight. I'm big sleepy. <laughs> and just finds like a little hole and just goes, whoa, wee. Yeah, I put my head over my head and just. Cowboy sleep. I sleep on your chest. I'm sitting <laughs> on a tree branch nearby, just watching, <laughs> you know, polish uh, my armor. I'm smoking a blunt and then falling asleep. <laughs> 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 uh, you're like sleeping on this tree branch and like soldiers are walking by like, where did you get a tree branch out here? That's crazy. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? I just manifested it. Yeah. Um, you just blood and fall asleep. The like dark side of the beach kids find yeah. you. They all are like, oh, cool blood. And they like smoke. <laughs> and they're like, oh, no. And they're like, it's <laughs> 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 like a people like just pile in your way. <laughs> what about you two? I was going to polish my armor and, and then sleep. I'll just yeah. collapse down and take a nap. All right. Um, you guys rest for like the better part of this last final day um, and are all simultaneously awoken by the thundering sound of a magic cannon firing off from the clock tower and you guys see a group of ragtag crack commandos flying through the sky screaming through with arcane energy this time there's no barrier <gasps> Yay. and they land in the dark keep and you guys see like flying explosions uh, Jason gets up and he says we fight and that's where we'll leave it for the last episode next week. Yeah, you were gonna say they they hit the ground. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been so good. <laughs>